Hello, good morning and welcome to the Modus Super Series. It's day two of week nine and after day one's action, the table is looking pretty congested with nobody able to pull away from the pack. Chris Murphy alongside me to digest yesterday's action and of course look ahead to today's fixtures. If we firstly recap on yesterday, Murph, it was... Danny Lauby, who set the standard for the day, but consistency or a lack of consistency was really the key of the evening for everyone, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. We saw everybody can beat everybody in this group, and it's going to be really difficult to uh, to pick who's going to go through. You see, you mentioned that 4-1 win for Lauby in the first match, um, but then later on in the evening, he ended up losing 4-0 to Stefan Belmont at the end of the night. So, yeah, consistency the problem for all of them and as we'll see in a moment three players on six points three players on four very very difficult to separate absolutely and one of the players involved who you picked out to possibly go on a run today is Nathan Gervin we're going to see in a second his combination finishing was superb for the majority of the night there was a 112 in there a 96 but this 117 it was fantastic wasn't it yeah what's good about him is he seems to be kind of mature beyond his years so we see with Lauby, for instance, that he'll throw really quick darts and sometimes not stop when he needs to. In that visit there from, from Gervin, we saw him re-grip the dart, make sure that he was composed, make sure he took it out, um, make sure he took care with every single dart, and I think that's a, a big plus for his game. Absolutely, and we saw it a number of times against Lauby. I know he was defeated in that match, but a few times where he stood back from the hockey, just recomposed himself, and maybe that's something that Lauby's going to need to, to do. Yeah, because he is absolutely rapid, isn't he, Danny Lauby? So, uh, yeah, it's something that he needs to work on. And also, a couple of times with the counting as well, he was throwing that fast um, that he left himself on bogey numbers for example, because he didn't take that extra little moment to think where he needed to go to make sure he left a finish. So that could be a problem. And in this short format, it is really important. And another player, Sebastian Biowetsky, is another one we were talking about before yesterday's action. Of course, such an exciting young talent. We may be expecting to see more from him. We've got the 104 check out here to show you, but we may be expecting a little bit more from him. I think we will see um, some brilliant performances from him over the course of the week. We know he's going to be here for at least five days, been in Group A, uh, but I don't expect to see it game after game after game for a, for a player so young who's shown massive moments when we've seen him before, um, but also he's not going to play at the top of his level every time. Nobody is. So, yeah, I think we will see something special at some point, but we can't expect it every match. And Danny Lauby, who we've already mentioned, a little bit of controversy in one of his games, but here we see the victory over Nathan Gervin, a really big one for him in what was one of the best matches of the evening. Yeah, and he seemed pretty laid back about that little, that dropped dart, the dart that never was. But, yeah, he, he w went on to win that leg, went on to win the match, was looking like he might end the night on eight points, but got heavily beaten by Belmont at the the end of the night so uh, yeah I think we again he's a very similar kind of feeling about a few of these players we know they've got a really high ceiling I think there's maybe a missing B game for a lot of them and Lab is one Absolutely. And as we said, the table is looking really congested at the moment. Three players on six points, three on four. It's still all to play for, isn't it? But today is where people need to make that move. Yeah, we'll probably see one or two players fall out of the running to top the group um, and will end up in the race to try and get themselves through to Group B and play in the evening sessions and have the advantage of three going through from five in that group. Um, but I still think that you're probably going to have at least four players in contention for that top spot and that place at finals night at the end of this session. Most definitely. And now we look ahead to our first match of the day. It is, of course, a repeat of the final game of last night. Alex Small getting a crucial second victory over Jamie Kellen. Who do you pick for this one? Well, they can hear me, so I have to be careful. But it's, uh, yeah, Kellen's sort of Mr. Consistency. He plays at a similar level all the time. Small showed in spells that he can go on these runs of 180s, uh, two or three legs where he can really blitz his opponent. If he manages to do that straight away, I would favour him. But since it's really early in the morning, I think I'll just favour Kelly on this one to be solid, steady and get the job done. Right then, let's see if Chris Murphy can get probably his first <laughs> correct prediction of the week. Let's hand over to Henry Deacon. Morning, Abby. Morning, everyone. Welcome to Moving Day here in Group A as we begin day two of week nine here at the Moda Super Series. And we kick off day two in the fashion we finish day one as Jamie Kelling takes on Alec Small. Two players who are on four points so they can join the top of the table on six with victory here. For Jamie Kelling, it was a day of two halves. Started quite well when he's lost to 
Danny Lauby in his opening game before then getting victories against Stefan okay, Belmont against Alec to throw and then first. Sebastian Biowetsky. But he finished his evening with a 4-1 defeat to Small in this fixture and a 4-0 defeat to Nathan Gerber. For Alex Hall, he got himself onto four points courtesy of victory in this final game of yesterday and his other victory being against One Stefan Belmont himself in a 4-3 decider. Change of referee today, Owen Binks enters the fray, Nine fresh from his three. exploits in Amsterdam and entering the commentary box back with me for the second day is Chris Murphy. Chris, a very good morning to you. Morning, Henry. Yeah, looking forward to another day of closely fought darts duels, I think. As I was saying to Abby upstairs, it is going to be difficult to pick between these players based on the evidence we saw last evening. I feel oh, evenly matched is probably the most appropriate way to describe this group. When you look at the statistics from yesterday, 90. they were very difficult to prize apart. Yeah, there are players that we know have the ability to do really special things because they've shown it before, either here at the Super Series oh, or elsewhere. Like, but I think the point that was made yesterday, and I repeated it there to Abby at the top of the show, that a lot of them kind of lack that B, maybe 80. even C game. And you record 160. So it could be a group about who wins the real grueling battles rather than who wins the thrilling matches. 100. Alec, record maybe 80. a war of attrition at times. Can Alex Small win the opening, the, the opening battle of the day, win the opening leg of the day? Yes, he can. In 18 darts, gets us underway. Leads by a leg to nil. As I mentioned, this was the last game of yesterday so and Alex Small actually played okay that. in that game average 90.18 got two maximums four out of ten in the doubles but Jamie Kenning and he admitted himself when I had a chat with him this morning that he just fell off a little 60. bit towards the end of the session yesterday yeah had those moments didn't he particularly in that first match where he was opening with 180s leg after leg after leg but didn't manage to keep up that standard who ca who can Keep up that standard. 100. But it's whether you can put it together for four legs, isn't it, in this format? And if you can do that, you'll get yourself a very 60. handsome average, some great statistics, and most most importantly, two points on the board. Well, Alex Small hit nine maximums yesterday. That was the most of anyone in the group. And he also one hit the highest finish in the group yesterday, a 1-2-4. That was our highest out Yes, so we haven't seen anything no, massive in terms of the finishing department as of yet. Maybe that could change here if Kenning decides to go for the ball if he gets the first two travels. It would have been a super spell having hit 99. his first 180 of the day to set it up. But we talk about the, the importance of Jamie, the two points. At this point, two points would move you from bottom to the top of the table, couldn't it? So Jamie Kelling. Game shot the second match. Consistency Jamie yesterday. Kelly. But that kind of makes the matches for him all about his opponent, doesn't it? It kind of makes yeah, it Alec like if they first. play their A game, they'll beat him. But if they don't, he'll beat them. Fee you know you've got to play well to beat Jamie. You know where he's going to be. Which can be a double-edged sword as an opponent. If you're playing well, then you'd fancy the job. But if you're just struggling a little bit for confidence, you'll see and know what Jamie can do. And that can lead you into a little bit of dread and a little bit of fear. So far here, he's performing above his mean, way above it. In fact, it's, it's kind of low to mid 80s where he, where he is over most of his matches. And that was borne out yesterday as well across his five games. But here... After two and a half legs, he's in three figures. And I know that's early to bring Four up averages five. and it will change dramatically after every visit, but, you know, could be almost halfway there, couldn't he? Six. Well, it's a potential guy as to how he's started the day. Well, Small leaves himself on 156, but Kenning can leave this handy and it would be for a break of throw for Six. JK. Like but only a 60 there opens the door for Small. We haven't seen Six, a dark missed Jamie at double yet in this match. So if Kelling can find one treble here, not that one, but it's still not over. It's certainly not now. 
91. Would have been one ninety six. An amazing rescue act. We haven't seen a dart miss at the outer Game ring, the third and we still leg. have a Alex, Alex Moore, Moore cashing in on that mistake there that left Kelling with only a dart at the bullseye, and Small takes the lead at two one. Well, look, it's Jamie to throw and first. And despite having an advantage, distinct advantage on the averages, eight points, Jamie Kelling. That missed start of the bullseye is the reason why he is behind in this match. 85. Now, I just wonder maybe for, for Kelling, and possibly as the day goes on, he's the one player who's had the advantage living in Andover to, to go back home and sleep in his own bed. And we mention it with Gary Anderson, don't we, whenever he plays at Minehead. Is that a distinct advantage that he can just go back to his own home environment instead of a hotel or Airbnb? Yeah, I, I mean, we'd be, I'd be guessing, wouldn't I have to ask him how he feels, but... Anderson, as an example, how many times has he won at Minehead? Once? Won the players, didn't he? 2014. Twice, yeah. yeah. And the UK Open the year that it was behind closed doors because of the, the beast from the East, which arguably probably didn't, didn't I was going to say, I wonder if he was a beast. Yeah. yeah. 58. Jamie McCorn, 141. But I do see that the benefit in being able to do that, particularly in this tournament. 45. Because you're getting up and you're throwing darts quite early in the morning, aren't you? In, the, in Group A and Group C. Jamie, one ninety-six. Nice to have home comfort once again, though. It's an uncomfortable visit where Kelling's had to rescue the shot Game after a wayward dart, flag. but this time he's pulled Jamie it off. Kelling. He matches the ninety-six out shot from the previous leg and levels up the match at two-two. Anything you can do, I can do just you as well, and we first. cannot prize these. Two apart in this game, as we cannot prize these two apart in the table. Although, in three legs time, one will be on six and one will still linger on four points. Just a reminder of the table if you have just joined us here at the Super Series. Three players at the top of the table. Nathan Gervin leads on legs difference from Sebastian Biowetsky and Danny Lauby, while Stefan Belmont alongside this pair are all on four points. In the group, we'll see Belmont in action in our second game against Danny Lauby, and then we'll see One all six players in this group in action after that when Biowetsky takes on Gervin. 92. All on throw so far in this one. Because that one dart missed at the ball. That was to break for Jamie Kelling. And it could prove 100. to be the difference in this match. Both players are going to be on a finish after a dozen darts. 140. I think you 152. Kellings is more favourable. Exactly the same shot he missed the ball for. 60. Jamie Rock 160. They're going to be better luck this time for JK. 96. He's already got this before. Double 18. 98. Just the other side this time, and so Small comes back for 92. Yeah, it looked like a, an absolutely 80. gorgeous line out for Alex Small, who'll be disappointed not to have been able to use it, having missed a couple of darts to break already. Kelling gets more, Game's and this time leg. he takes Jamie the chance, Kelly. gets the crucial break of throw, leads the match, and will throw for an opening win of the morning. Indeed, so he will, and you just said that Small had to take advantage Game of every on. leg he had the throw when you consider the scoring department. He's being outscored in every single metric in the ton plus, the ton 40, and the 180 department. 100. He'll be desperate to be here on Saturday night. Going back to your point about him being reasonably local, Henry, we saw the support that Ryan Furness had on Saturday's finals night last week, and he went through to the final after that dramatic 60. darting evening here at the Super Series. The first ever televised three-way nine dart 60. shootout that he was involved in that he hit a 180 in. If Kelling gets through, I'm sure he'll bring a few friends and family along. And don't forget, you could be there as well. Tickets available for free from dartshop.tv. Him and now and Monk both get through on Saturday. It could be very live in here. Yeah, the demand for tickets may actually end up outweighing the supply. Basically, get in early is what we're saying for a Saturday night at the Dart. I can think of a better way to spend my Saturday night, Murph. Absolutely. 
59. Jamie, you have a call on 143. If you weren't working already, you'd be applying for a ticket yourself, I assume. Yes. Anything for free. 93. Like Kelling here has put himself in the perfect position, but another in there. Leaves tops. Oh, what shot a shot. Sick flag. When the match Alex was under Small. threat, when Kelling was waiting on 50 to pick up the points in the opener, Alex Small produces Seven for an four enormous eight. shot. Alex to throw first. And look at how he's starting the final leg. 180. He's flicked the switch. Eighty-five. But it's uh, six perfect darts as well for Alex Small. Treble seventeen, treble seventeen, double top, and then treble twenty, treble twenty, treble twenty. One hundred. And has that big finish and that 90. big score to start the final leg forced Kelling into submission? He's 135 after nine. He's going to get six at it. And what a turnaround this hey, is because it looked like to all intents and purposes that Kelling was going to be the winner. But Alex Small has found something inspired over the last leg and a half. 95. And he's going to come back for tops after 12 in the decider. And he's going to get a go at it. Well, I don't think it's fair on the players that Abby keeps asking me for my predictions because everything I like say, 40. it goes the other way. Although I did say that Small is capable of these little blitzers and it looks like he's in the midst of one here. Game shot and it's one match. that has taken him Alex to victory, Small. winning the last couple of legs. And Jamie Kelling might not know what's hit him there because there he was sitting on 50 for the match. Small took out that whopper of a 1-4-2 checkout, kicked off the next leg with its only 180 of the match and went on to win the game 4-3. A big start for Alex Small. Coming next is Stefan Belmont against Danny Lauby.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. A really intriguing battle to kick off the morning's action. Alex Small with his second successive victory over Jamie Kellen. Some superb finishing from both in that match, but a 1-4-2 finish from the Welshman really turned the tide in that one. That was to win the sixth leg. He then went on to finish in sublime fashion. As you can see, just below 67% on the outside to ring from the Welshman in that one. Fantastic stuff to kickstart his day. He's now on to six points. As we can see on the table, he joins the likes of Biowetsky, Gervin, and Danny Lauby on six points. It's still Belmont and Kelling on four, but it's Belmont against Danny Lauby up next for you, of course. Belmont was the player who put in his best performance against Danny Lauby last night, winning that one four legs to nil. Lauby really didn't know what had hit him with the performance that Belmont was able to put in. Let's see then how this one unfolds in the company of Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Thanks, Abby. Yes, Danny Lauby has had time to rest, reflect, maybe wake up and realise it wasn't a nightmare that 4-0 whitewashed defeat at the hands of Stefan Belmont probably for me the surprise result of the day Belmont notoriously early in the opening session a slow starter but it was Daniel Lauby who wasn't in the races in that one against the Swiss belly challenge two winner earlier this year and the American will be looking for a little bit of revenge and redemption. Will he get it, Henry? Hey, first, I guess Stefan to throw We're first. about to find Stephen out. Not. It's a new day, a fresh start for all of these players. And I mentioned yesterday, it, it was a bit of an up and down day for Danny Lowe. He managed to get himself onto six points. That first game 100. yesterday when he took on Kelling and he averaged 96.62 and hit three maximums we thought well maybe we're going to see the Danny Lauby that dominated 60. the CDC circuit a player that's graced the Ali Pali stage but he hit four maximums in the day for even coming in that first game and as the day went on it was kind of up and down we saw some indifferent performances and then we saw him get back to that 90 Four, level five. for then a losing out to Belmont 4-0 and a disappointing performance from his standards. 100. But you get the sense that the way he played and still being on six points, there's always a player on day two that will make the move to claw his place at the one top of the group. Darts like that will help Stephen Belmont's case, but you think Danny Lauby will be the one that, if he can accelerate his level, could do just that. 77. A dart on the floor for Danny Lauby. We won't go there again. So yesterday, Murph. That one coming out of the board. 41. Belmont making a reasonable start here. Only 41 and 45 in a couple of minutes. 140. Stephen, you've got 135. Kind of made okay by the 180 and 100 he's had as well. 135 after a dozen, starting on the bulk. And if he gets the treble 20, I tell you what, he can't miss the bullseye. 99, Danny But he didn't get the treble 20, so he didn't get a chance to go for it. Danny Lauby might end up on the ball himself. 92. He won't, so Belmont will return 36. for double 18 to win his fifth consecutive leg against Lauby. Game and there the it is. Stephen and it's five without reply for the talented American. He's got work to do here in this match, and if he loses this one, well, it makes things very interesting first. because five of the six players will be on six points apart from Jamie Kenning on four. And then Gervin and Biawetsky would have the opportunity in game three to claw their way in front. Now, our good friend and colleague Paul Nicholson is a big connoisseur of dart shirts. And I think that's a great effort from Stefan Belmont, to be honest. The 60. Swiss flag on his arm, that's a big plus. You can see the, the mountains there on the back as well. 100. I'm not even going to warrant that with a reply. There's me thinking I was being subtle. 60. Fifty-seven. Mind you, there's some patterns to Lauby shirts. I'm not quite 
made out what it is yet. Sixty. One hundred. Fifty-nine. Danny Rock, one hundred and fifty-six. One, five, six, then, for Lowby. Oh, what's going on here? One hundred and twenty. It was in and out. Great dart to make sure that he did leave double 18 in the end. If he hits this first dart, I'm going to call it a 156 finish. Oh, well, it doesn't matter anyway. He does leg. get the 36 Danny in the end, Lowry. and he does level the match, and he does finally win a leg against Stefan Belmont. The drought is over. So look at Stefan to throw first. For Danny the drummer. Never mind drumming. He took a drubbing yesterday, didn't he, from his opponent? He's just looking. No, I'm no body language expert. Just looks a little bit lethargic at the moment, a little bit displeased with his... Well, I mean, we spoke about consistency at the top of the show. We're getting inconsistency visit by visit 59. from Stephen Belmont in this match. One hundred and seeing some better stuff though from Lauby. The average is now ninety eight point two. But as you say with, with Bellman and, and when you look at his statistics and you look at his year in general, it, it's very hard at times to to kind of work 100. out where he's at. And we mentioned the challenge to order America. He's twenty he's twenty second. Uh sorry, twenty third. Lauby's twenty second in that order of merit. But he's won a challenge to event this year. So when he's on it, he's on it. But he just needs to find the bits in and around. Yeah, we mentioned yesterday, didn't we, as well, that he won that Challenge Tour event, but then hasn't gone past the last hey, 32 in any, any of the events that have followed, and there's been 10 of them. Well, he will go for the 17 segment, but we don't know if he'll go for the bull. He did go for the bull. Sign of confidence. It looks as if he's found a flow, 25. which perhaps we didn't see all too often yesterday. One double twelve 13. was the MO, and I get that because he was having some difficulties around the 16 and 8 segment yesterday. Went the Rob Cross route on the 140, went treble 18 first, and Albi returns for double Aye, six. And this is for a break of flow, and having 12. lost five in succession to Stefan Belmont. Double three Six. for the senior win two in a row. Stephen, you require yeah, we saw him 56. That yesterday, hit that double after messing around on it a little bit, but Belmont here has a chance to keep his nose in front in the match that it has seemed Aimed like. The third leg. Lauby has Stephen been the dominant Belmont. force. Belmont is the man who has the lead at 2-1. Well, the key difference in this game is the well, fact that Lauby's only hit one first. from eight. On the doubles, Stefan Belmont's only had two opportunities at the outer ring, and he's taken them both. 60. You see the disparity there in the averages. Three legs into the game. Well, Lauby's scoring has been far superior to that of Stefan Belmont, although Belmont has hit the game's only 180. No, Is what makes a difference. As Henry just highlighted, two from two for Belmont. One from eight for Danny Lowby in this game. We saw last Nine, week from Moreno Blow. Excellent finishing stats, but it was a score and it just went missing at times. But Aye, you get afforded opportunities and you take them. Sometimes a scoring, de a scoring game doesn't matter as much.
60. Mention the counting as well of some of these players. Really on 305, 18s is a more sensible shot, particularly when your opponent's in front in the leg. One hundred. A ton leaves Laubia finish. As it turned out, he only scored 60 in the previous visit anyway, but had he managed a 140, he wouldn't have left a checkout. Don't give your opponent unnecessary opportunities. 140. There's some way to atone for it if the 161 doesn't go. It may still do. Having in said that, Henry, 82. maybe the last dart there should have Didn't been bullseye 25 five. as well. He'd be on a two darter now rather than a three. Ninety-eight remaining. Now we've seen just a couple of 45. counting decisions he there seventy-nine that may come to cost Stefan Belmont. It'll be treble nineteen for double eleven. Well, it should have been. Speaking about maths, well, that's just decision making, and it's bad decision six. making. Stefan, you require six. Only gave himself a dart of the ball. Goes a nineteen route. He gets a dart, a double out. Out a ring, double, double top. Which is missed by Belmont. Game for double shot tennis the four flag. Stefan well, Belmont. It's all about the working out. And the pair of them are getting it wrong in that leg. But Belmont is getting it right in the match. A 3 1 lead and one away from the win. If they get Stefan to throw first. It's a moment like Game that on. where you want to see their way of working and see how they've got to those specific numbers and the decision making as to why we got there. But Belmont is 100. on the hill, is the man from the Alps. And Labby has a mountain to climb. 42. Slippery slope, this. But yeah, I think it, it might be worth at some point getting you know, someone with more expertise than me. Maybe Chris Mason or Paul Nicholson, just to talk through some of these shots because it is such an important aspect 96. of the game. Like, counting is one element, but I think with Labby there, he, he knew the shots, it was the decision making. 79 goes for a, a 39, which is all well and good if you hit it, but if you don't, you leave yourself potentially only going, for the, only going for the ball, which is what happened. Board management. 140. Stephen, you have a 160. Well, Bowman's going to have six on 161 to secure victory and to put him on to six points and do the double over Danny Lalby. 65. Now that was good decision making. Uh, utilizing 49. the Bullseye 25 segment Stephen, you're that time 96. to give himself a two data, but he's actually got two visits to seal a second successive victory over Danny Lauby. 56. And not just victories, emphatic ones as well. And it's done Danny Lauby's leg difference, no end of horror. But Stephen leaves himself on top if there's a miss from Stefan Belmont. Third. And there is. And Lauby returns, and, and this could be a turning point. It was three out of four, wasn't it, before that? On the fifth leg. Now three out of Danny seven. Lauby. And now... Three out of five in terms of legs in the match. Lauby winning two of them and now throwing so it's Danny to force to the last throw leg first. decider. And as we mentioned, oh, so often here at the Super Series, games can swing on one moment 59. in this best of seven format. It's quick fire, so any mistake gets punished to the hilt. But Lauby having... Obtained the break in good 96. fashion. 96. In the 134 for taking out tops. Has only kicked off 59. 140. That's a much better visit. Could have let Belmont in against the darts if he went troublous once again. We mentioned Danny Lauby yesterday. Professional drummer, music teacher. 60. And he really does play this game with rhythm as well, doesn't he? 58. He plays it at drum roll speed. And maybe sometimes he just needs to settle down a little bit. Not so much in the, the scoring phase, but when he's going for different targets on doubles. We look in the game, 2 out of 11. 
96. I mean, ask most darts players. It's not an easy thing to switch from one side of the board to the other. And play at the same pace. And that's where maybe that department favours a more deliberate player like Stefan. Because he has the time just to maybe step back, recompose without disturbing that rhythm. 46. Danny Rock 149. Well, looking to land a big blow here. He's got six starts to clean up. 149. Double 16. Game and he just makes me look flag. silly, doesn't he? Danny Full Lowby. speed all around the board and takes out no problem at all. I bow down to Danny Lowby. That is absolutely Seven sublime. It is Stefan to throw first. The biggest finish we've seen so far this week. Game on. And how good a sight is it when you see that at such a speed as well? 45. Yeah, it's a, a real symbol of what he can do. 93. Do yourself a quaver. If you can't compete, Henry, don't try. 43. But in the end, it's it's come down to this sudden death leg, effectively. 57. Just as we saw in the first match of the morning. Is that going to be today's pattern? Well, we saw it a number of times yesterday. And to be fair, we only saw a couple of 4 nils amongst our action on Monday evening here. At the Super Series. You saw five last leg deciders yesterday. We're already into our second today. 97. Might have to order luncheon at this rate, Murph. Well, if you're offering. You'll make up for the lack of coffee. 41. Well, that's a slip from Belmont. And now Lowby has got the chance to pull away. One and look at that. 180. The treble 20 hit with the rhythm sticks of Danny Lowby. And it has been the timing of Lowby. The 1 3 4 to make it 3 2. And now his first maximum of the match. 100. And he to put him 74. within a couple of darts and seeing a comeback win. Oh, slip. Doesn't have to go the bull route here with Belmont not on. 34. Any kind of out shot. So he leaves himself tops when he comes back. And you made the point about that 180, the only one in the match for Lowby. That's exactly what Alex Small did in the last leg against Jamie Kelling as well. 180. Danny Rock 140. And Belmont does exactly the same, but it might be in vain. Double five. No score. And that's a wide. And Belmont returns for 45. 45. To seal a 4 3 victory in a topsy turvy match. See, I should have made that point about chasing around doubles before that visit. Because that was a real mess. Can Belmont get the better of Lowby again? 29. He can't. Both players have missed match winning opportunities. Danny require 40. Danny's turn comes again. Game shot and this the time match. he finds the Danny double. Lowby. And this time he finds a victory against Stefan Belmont. And Danny Lowby is the first player in Group A to make it on to eight points, courtesy of that last leg victory against Stefan Belmont. It was quite suspect at times on the doubles, but the highlight was a 1 4 9. A superb comeback from Lowby, who was 3 1 down. He was, timing was pretty much perfect in the latter stages of that match. So he claims victory in game two of our day. When we return after this short break, we'll have seen all six players in action as Sebastian Biowetsky takes on Nathan Gervin.
welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we've just witnessed Danny Lauby come through a last leg decider to get the better of Stefan Belmont. There you can see and it really was a topsy-turvy encounter. Belmont racing into an early lead, making the most of his opportunities at the back end of legs despite Lauby's superior scoring for much of that and as you could just see there, Danny Lauby's 1-4-9 finish, the biggest of the week so far and that really kick-started the Americans come back and from there he looked the better player both missed match starts but it was Lauby who was able to get over the line and become the first player to move on to eight points in the league table and we're going to take a little look at that now there you can see confirmation of that and it's Nathan Gervin who's got the opportunity in this one if he can get the win over Biowetsky of course that is our next match one of the two will join Lauby on eight points that is our next match and it was probably the closest match of the evening last night when these two met. It was Gervin who came out the 4-3 winner with some fantastic finishing from both in that, but it was Gervin who got the better in that one. Let's see then how this one unfolds in the company of Henry Deacon and first Chris Murphy. Thanks, Abby. Yes, uh, a battle between two players who promise so much. And maybe we will see the best of them this week, maybe even in this match. A pair of them, as Abby alluded to, met yesterday. Beer Wetsky averaged more than Nathan Gervin, despite defeating that one, an, an average of 93.33, but went down 4-3 after Gervin posted some very, very healthy finishing stats. Four out of six, in fact, on his doubles, including a 74 checkout. So the... Polish player will look to put it right here. The 18-year-old takes on the 19-year-old from Scotland. Twice at... Okay, first look at Sebastian to throw up. first. Game on. In the uh, World Youth Events. A uh, man who's hit a nine darter on the Pro Tour as well. And he does have the potential, if, if both these players get going, Henry, to be a brilliant game. Absolutely. And you get the sense that on day two... One of these two men could be the man that makes the move up the Four, table. Well, one of them will be on eight points alongside Lauby with victory here. And then the cracks in the group begin to become apparent. Hey, do you want? You know, a couple of players in the back on six. And then you'd have Belmont and Kelling on four. And they'd already be two games behind in effect. Even at this early juncture, that's a lot of ground to make up when it's only top spot that secures your place at finals night on Saturday. 100. Nathan Gervin, who's using Andy Jenkins' darts this week, can use them to good effect yesterday. I know Rocky is tuning in, so good morning to you, Andy. 96. Decisions to make here for Gervin. Size to go downstairs for 17. Lee 144. Biowetsky wants 167 for an opening leg hold. 59. Well, we saw Danny Lalby hit a 149 checkout in our last game. Is Gervin going to get us a 144? He could still do. Oh, that would have left double 12. He could have got about half an inch the other side. Yeah, just the wrong side of the wire. 90. Allows so that's the a, a look at this 108. Has to try and navigate his way past that, looking at the green bit. 56. Went for the right part of it, the only available yeah, part of it, but could not quite manage to find it. So probably will be broken in leg one. Double 10 for that to happen. Again, we see that little step back Game from Nathan Gervin. that he was... Leg. So adept Nathan at yesterday, Gervin. keeps his composure, resets, refocuses, re-aims, and takes the lead in the match, 1-0. And crucially, a break so against Nathan as well against Biowetsky. Game on. As you mentioned, his composure is something perhaps above his years. Nathan, I think he's only 19, but he's been on our screens for a long time. As you say, Aye, tries to run him up want... in the BDO youth event. Oh, 
48. Yeah, and we've seen him, Nathan Gervin now, well, he'll, he'll reach 150 match mark during this 56. Group. First match tomorrow will be that milestone for him. So plenty of experience in this event as well. In contrast to Biowetsky, who's making his 100. first. 100. One hundred and eighty. And putting the Jenkins darts to good use. BOX is just got to be a little bit careful here. Because Gervin's got this game by the scruff of his neck. He's in full control. One hundred and sixty-eight. What a fantastic six darts that is. Yeah, and that one six eight. It will just go down as a. A 140 plus throw, I think there needs to be a change in stats in darts where you see perfect visits because for me that's better than a 180. Again, just taking a moment. Eight. This time failing Sebastian, you to get the desired out comes as a chance now. Really, we saw earlier a player go for treble 13. This is why you go the 19 route because Danny Lauby only got a dart at the ball. Fiewetsky got one at double top Nathan, you but couldn't get eight. past the blocker. Ironically, both of the same outcome. Gervin then returns for double four. Game shot the well, that was a case leg. of one up and one Nathan in for Nathan Gervin. Gervin. He backs the break up with a hold. He leads 2-0 and he's halfway towards eight points. And because of his superior well, length difference over Danny Lauby, he would go top of Group A at this early to midway juncture. You look at the averages in this match, there's nothing in them. Going into that leg, there was one point between the pair in averages. But the reason that Gervin is at the same average is because he's had so many more darts at double. Six more darts at double in total compared to the one that Biowetsky's had 59. in the opening two legs. And that was at tops for that 79 combo. Gervin's just grinding out the opportunities, isn't he, for himself? 100. Missed four in the last leg at double before converting with dart five on the double four. 100. But giving himself those five darts by virtue of that 180 backed up by the 168. And his timing looks impeccable again in this leg. 140 just to wrestle the darts away from Biorecki, and he's on the cusp of a final lead and a double break now my favorite shot in darts henry talk about things that are better than 180 it's a 149 setup from here 60 bullseye treble 13. sexy darts 119. well they're rather attractive as well i wouldn't know what attractive is 140 Nathan, you require 62. well this is a 3-0 Wrong bed, double eight in the end, and again he refocuses. Become a key feature of his game. This forty-six doesn't work out. It's a chance for Biowetsky. Choices here. Ops for double sixteen. Game and that's why the third leg. Sebastian Biowetsky. Crucial moment there. Had to take it out. He was up to the task, but Gervin will return for a three-one lead and. Well, I don't know about you, but first. looking at the way Nathan throws, it's very reminiscent of Nathan Aspinall. One yeah, say a bit of that. Even in the way he steps back at crucial doubles to readjust and realign. One no realignment about that, though. Maybe there'll be a realignment in the scoreline because that is an opening maximum from Sebastian Biewicz, a man who's... Produced perfection before, did it at the UK Open a couple of years ago. Not the year that he actually reached the quarterfinals. Well, that was a, just a little signal of what he could do. Here's that 305 again. And we do see Gervin getting the sums right. Had he found a second treble, he would have been on a finish. Got to the quarterfinal as a Riley's qualifier in the UK Open. 
one. Oh, Barry Lynn in the past had previously done it. Yeah, there have been a few famous amateur qualifiers. Rob Cross springs to mind. Sebastian Rockwell, 84. 14 segment. And the ball. 59. Same equation. Nathan, you require 84. Gervin. Starting touche. But he gets the treble for double 11. Game and he gets the double. Play. And he leads 3-1 against Bioetsky. And he's a leg away from becoming the table topper. On legs different. Early on here on Tuesday. Sebastian we call this that. moving day. Is Gervin the one to make his move? Well, he set his stall out right from the get-go. One. Yeah, quite often in these group A's, Henry, you've commentated enough of them now, and I'm sure watched enough of them before you joined us here at the Super Series. Quite often a player will be sitting pretty after the second Three, day of action. I don't see that happening in this group. I, I said at the top of the show to Abby, I think we might lose a couple of players from the running, realistically, but I think we'll have at least four fighting it out for top spot come 40. tomorrow. You'd imagine it's probably going to be two to four points separating the top four, and maybe nothing more than that. Because ultimately, when you look at the results from yesterday, they just basically cancelled each other out. And it feels like you're going to get a similar feeling today. Well, this match is picking up and picking up as it goes on. The both players 100. are now averaging more than 90. Gervin still in a golden position. One hundred and eighty. The one eighty doesn't leave a finish, but it does put pressure on Biowetsky to at least join him in that one sixty something territory. Should go down here. Ninety one. Oh, brilliant. And Gervin is looking to avoid a bit of darting deja vu because he was three one up in his first game yesterday against Stefan Belmont and ended up losing four three. But it looks as if from this juncture. He is going to reverse those fortunes as he leads himself 68 after 12, unless Bioetsky can go swimming in the darting sea with the big fish. Well, you had had 42. a big finish in each of the first Making two matches. The highest was 1 2 4 yesterday, but we've had 1 4 2 and 1 4 9. A simple 68 would get the job done here for the Scottish teenager. 48. But he can't quite find Sebastian it, so maybe this is the big finish. Maybe this is a big moment for Bioetsky. Treble 20 will leave him the ball. 80. Nathan, you're required 20. And so Gervin returns for double 10. Go to top the, the match. group. And it is Nathan as good Gervin. a start to the day as it can get for Nathan Gervin. An average of 92 plus and a 4 1 victory against Sebastian Biowetsky. Important as well because it keeps the pole on six points. Two maximums, two Gervin's name, four from 11 on the doubles. A high out of 84. Victory for Nathan Gervin. We enter round two of fixtures for our Tuesday here at the Super Series after this short break. We're going to see Danny Lauber who can get himself onto double figures if he can get a victory against Alex Small, who could join the party on eight points.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series at the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just seen Nathan Girvan get off the mark this morning with a 4-1 victory over Sebastian Biawetsky. As you can see there, a really controlled performance from the young Scotsman. Again, showing that aggression and the maturity that we were talking about at the top of the show. A 92 average for him there, 4 out of 11 on the doubles. As for the Polish youngster, well, he missed 24 darts at double in his last two matches last night. He just had the three chances at the outer ring, taking one of them, but he really didn't get going. It was a bit of a, an improvement on last night for him, but he was just blown out of the water by the young Scotsman. Next up for you, two men who've got off to winning starts this morning in Alex Small and Danny Lauby, both of them producing big finishes in their opening matches. A 1-4-9 from Danny Lauby in his opening match and a 1-4-2 of course from the Welshman. It's going to be a really intriguing battle this one with Alex Small showing glimpses of the scoring power that he possesses. Can he do it again against a Danny Lauby who's yet to show his A game at the Super Series? Let's find out how this one pans out in the company of Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Thanks Abby. Yes, both players with those big finishers. And big starts to the day. Big victories despite the small margin of them. 4-3 successes for both Small and Lauby in their opening affairs. One of them will double up. Would it be the 29-year-old American ace, twice a participant in the PDC World Championship? Or will the recent champion of champions winner first. get the better Game of Lauby on. in this one? It was Lauby who won the game yesterday by four legs to no, two. That was his penultimate match of the day. Small signed off with a victory, One so he's on a little hundred. bit of a, a winning run now. And this is where moving day comes into the fore now, Six. doesn't it? When we enter round two and round three of the day. Lauby can get himself onto ten points. I'd open up a four-point gap on One Small, but victory here for the Welsh would mean three players all clamoured onto eight points. BOX would then also be able to join the party no, if he could get victory seven. against Belmont in the next game. All gets incredibly interesting 64. at this juncture. And for Belmont and Kelling, this round of fixtures, and we'll talk about it a bit more when they are in oh, action because Lauby hits a max leave 67 after 12. This round is absolutely crucial if they don't want to get cut adrift from the rest. And that's what it's all about today, isn't it? Keeping yourself in contention going into the final day of Group 8. Treble 9 for tops. 57. Rarely seen route that, but a more than acceptable one. Could go double-double here. Well, opted against it early in the match. I think if it was the last leg decider, he might have had to go that way. Double two. Game shot in the first Gets there in the end. That could have got a little bit dicey for Danny. If he missed that. Alex Small, who was out the leg for large, swaves. Second leg, it's Alex. Up until the 140. Could have snatched it. 41. And now he gets over the line in 18. Both speedsters, this pair as well. And, 61. You know, they both play to the peak of their powers. I think we could start seeing the potential for a record-breaking time in a match here at the 100. Super Series. If a, if a player was to win 4-0 with a fantastic Nine, performance and the other seven. one wasn't so far behind, that the fastest match we've seen so far is Graham Usher one against Gavin Carling in phase four when we were still in Southampton. And he beat him in one of three 49. matches that was completed in less than six minutes of playing time. In fact, Usher's done that twice. Six. Did the same to Andy Jenkins as well. The other one, Chaz Barstow over Kevin Burness last year. If I remember rightly, those two games against Andy Jenkins one were in successive like days. Fifty-six. It looks as if Alex Small was going to level us up here in next to no time at all. 100. I like requires 64. Uh, we're going to head down to the southwest region of the board. Another one of them for the requisite 32. double. 
Only require 94. Now he's back for 94. Gambles on the treble. Game and the gamble the pays off. Leg. Danny Lowe. High rolling from the American. 94 checkout to double his advantage in this one. So look, it's Danny to throw first. But interestingly, again, it was a leg that really small dominated up until that last part. Had those, or the dart to win it. Couldn't take it. Now he took full advantage and looks to have stolen the initiative here in the third. I'll tell you what, he's come out the traps today, hasn't he, Danny Lowby? Started really well in his first game. Missed doubles kind of brought the average down to 86.3, so scoring average probably around 95, 100. all told. Just looking at the times of throw, on average it's taking Alex Moore six 55. seconds from when Lowby... Retrieves his darts to throwing all three of his and allow me seven seconds. Hey, do That's you a want... nice setup. I'll tell you what, that, that time is not going to be far away if Lowby wins this 4 0. The, the record 42. five Game minutes 40. 48 seconds from Graham Usher over Gavin Carney. Danny Lowby 3 0 up Danny Lowby. after four minutes and 25 seconds. Well, we'll it's Alex to throw first. So he needs to get this done in roughly 80 seconds. 140. Nine data would do it. 100. Alex Moore wants to be out there a little bit longer. He doesn't want any 100. records smashed. One hundred and forty. I suppose Lowby's used to broken records, isn't he, in his time as a drummer? Ninety-one. I'm not sure about broken ones. Oh, this is a great, great visit. Puts the pressure on this. Puts the pressure on this big finish, and it's not going to go. So Lowby will have the opportunity. One hundred, and he one hundred and twenty-one. And if it goes in this visit, so does the record. But it's not going to happen. Well, it's not the first time that Danny Lavi's suffered a dart on the floor. And the time has passed. 77. I like it requires 70. For a record-breaking match. 64. But it could well be the Danny whitewash win. 44. That Danny desired. It goes the Motown route. Four tops. Double 10. 24. Can't find it. Alec requires six. Double three. No score. And Lowby is going to return Danny for the 4 0 win. For an early morning bagel. Go for the American. The and Danny Lowby, Danny Lowby is the first player on double digits here in Group A. He deposes of Alex Small. 4-0 in one of the quickest games we've ever seen here at the Moda Super Series. Six minutes and 22 seconds. That was all it took for Danny to get the job done. One maximum to his name. Four from 10 on the checkouts. High out 94. And we're going to take a short break. We're going to catch our collective breaths as we see Jamie Kelling up against Nathan Gervin.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to the live lounge here in Portsmouth where we've just witnessed our first whitewash of the morning, Danny Lauby inflicting it on Welshman Alex Small and we can take a little look at the stats from that one, a really fast paced match, both players settling really nicely into their rhythm but it was Danny Lauby who was the more clinical at the back end of legs, 40% checkout success there from the American Alex Small missing all five of his attempts attempts at the outer ring. Both doing very well in the scoring phase though. We'll take a little look at the league table because Danny Lauby has become the first player into double figures in the league table there. You can see it. He's on 10 points. Nathan Gervin has the opportunity in the next match to join him. He's currently on eight points. And then Jamie Kelling there, one of two players on four points. So the next match then, Kelling looking to get back to winning ways. Of course, he was beaten in a last leg decider in the opening match of the morning. Gervin clinical in his first match of the morning. So let's see how this one unfolds in the company of Henry Deacon and Chris Murphy. Yes, thanks, Abby. And Gervin also clinical when he crushed Kelling yesterday, a 4-0 whitewash win for the Scotsman. In a bit of a disastrous end to the evening session for Jamie Kelling, and it's been followed by a, another defeat against Small. Will it be another defeat against Gervin as well? We'll find out. But for me, Gervin the favourite in this game. Most definitely so, but this is a vital game for J Jamie Kelling. If he loses this one, he could become detached from those at the top of Group A. Right, so Nathan Gervin, he can join Lauby on 10 yeah, points of a victory to throw first. in this one. Game on. Lauby's beginning to make his move on day two. Can Gervin join him? 100. Yeah, bigger match for Kelling, as Henry's just alluded to, than it is for Nathan Gervin. If JK loses this, he'll be going deeper underground 44. in terms of the Super Series Group A table. And the thing is, you look at that first game, it's Alex Small. Really, he should have got over the line in that, if we're being brutally honest. Yeah, I think that is fair to say. Six. Winning can be a habit, unfortunately, so can losing. And it is three defeats on the spin now for Kelling since his 4 1 success against Sebastian Biowetsky in the middle of yesterday's session. It was top of the table at that point. Admittedly, it was very early on in the group. But he was playing well. It, we, we did say yesterday that. Jamie Kelly simply has to win the matches in which he plays well. And he played well in that first match for long spells of it and didn't get over the line. And that could prove to be very costly. He's playing well at the start of this match. 57, Jamie, 141. He's got six and one for one. May only need the three. If he could have got the trouble 19, it would have given him the dart at double 12. But he leaves himself 52. So he should get two. Most likely at double 16. You know what will happen there? We'll go single One, 12. Oh, look at Jamie, that. 152. The dead cat maximum that from Nathan Gervin, leaving 26. The only reason he stayed there Game shot in the first was leg. to try and put off Jamie his Kelly. opponent. But he hasn't put him off. Because he knew he'd get the big call from our referee, Owen Binks. For the 180, it proved so to be Nathan to throw first. in vain in the end. But it might just spark Nathan Gervin to his brilliant best levels. Even though Kelling converted, it just sends out a signal to him that Gervin's not out of this match at any point, not out of a leg at any point. And to be fair, 41. under the sort of pressure he's under now, Kelling, having lost a few matches, that took a bit of composure. Absolutely. Here he comes again, though. One hundred and eighty. barrage of brilliance from Nathan Gervin. Last three visits, 180, 140, 180. That is eight out of nine darts that have found the treble 20. Sixty. And he's miles away in this leg. 
But Jamie Kelling is going to put it back a little bit, but Gervin's still going to have six from the one, two, one. Then with Kelly not on a finish, he went 25 first to then come back up for 96. And that's an excellent last up when you consider that a lot of the bed would have been blocked. It's that composure, isn't it? And for a player throwing at that speed. 54. Nathan, you were going 60. Excellent composure. I do, I do like on your the second leg. comparison Nathan to, the, to the other Nathan. Nathan Aspinall, the player at the top of this game. Very, very similar in style. Looks pretty similar in so look, it's Jamie mentality to throw as well. He can get fired up on. at times. We saw him a few times yesterday get that, that little bit of anger that seemed to... Uh, Hey, elevate him five. to another level. And that sort of thing in, in sports, a double-edged sword, you've got to channel it in the right right. Certainly doing so hey, here. T1. I mean, the average 104 will tumble down to 102 as a consequence of that slip into the one, but two maxes to his name. And I think sometimes if you can do it right, and you can just get a bit frustrated with yourself and channel it in the right way, it can work. It's when you... Overdo it, and we do see it with those sorts of players. They have to find themselves in an angry way. You can get yourself too fired up, and it goes the other way, and you actually put yourself off. I think it also depends on the kind hey, of throw you have. If you've got a sort of hard throw anyway, then it can force you to throw the darts as you throw them best. But if you've got one of those kind of relaxed lumps, then anger's probably going to alter your throw too much. It's where the the mental can affect the technical. Exactly. I mean, it wouldn't work for a Steve Beaton oh, no. photo, say, for example. I don't think Steve Beaton's ever been angry. Fifty-one. Jamie required ninety-one. Bronze to Donis. Meanwhile, here, J.K. Looking for trouble eighteen there, but despite the Gervin brilliance, Kenning is doing what he needs to do on throw. Well, will we see him ask a question again like he did last time? He hit a 180. The pile the pressure on Kelling. Kelling stood up to it. This time it's a 140. Just to appear in the rear view mirror of Kelling, who wants double 18 Game and remains in cruise day. control. 2 Jamie 1 Kelling. to JK. Going through the right gears at the right time is Jamie Kelling. Well, look, it's Nathan to throw. Gervin's going to have to find some kind of turbo charge from here. Well, there's a 15 point gap in the averages, but it's a player losing the Aye, match that is better in that department. Just shows your point about timing. Despite that superior scoring, Gervin has still only had one dart at double. 100. If I gave you a blank page with the statistics in this game without knowing what the legs one department was, You'd say Nathan Gervin was 96. well clear. It's not the way it works in this sport. Averages, 45. statistics are only a guide. The only really important one is the legs one column. 140. And I think we're just seeing a little bit of the Gervin grit. I'm going to call it that little bit of anger that he needs to spark himself hey, into life. T5. You could just see when he released the second and third dart there. The bit of poise, bit of purpose. But again, it's all about the darts, all about the throw in leg four. He's going to get six 56. from 56 to level up at two apiece. Game and to make it two play. from two on the doubles, four legs in. We've only actually seen one missed dart at a double in this game so far. That was a 14 dart leg for Gervin, averaging just Gervin underneath the top. To but what can he do against the darts here? Where Kelling has strutted his stuff. 100. You mentioned that that Scottish grit. He does 100. hail from near the Granite City, doesn't he, Nathan Gervin? Lives pretty close to Aberdeen. 70. I believe we uh, we heard yesterday that he supports Aberdeen as well. 
Don't tell Alan Suter that. Sixty. Big Arbo fan is uh, Suits. Yeah, a product of the Alan Suter Academy. What a great ambassador for the game he is, Alan Suter. Had that fabulous run at the World One Championship. PDC Newcomer of the Year. Which I think even he found a strange one, having been playing the game for so long. But it's not just the youngsters, is it, that make an impression on the PDC circuit. Look at the players who are on top of the game now. The likes of Johnny Clayton, Gerwin Price, Rob Cross. Peter White being the big example. 85. And he really hit the big time like he did now in his early 40s when he got to that first world final. 170. Nathan Gerber will be hoping he's got plenty of titles in his pocket by the time he gets to that age. Well, this time the, the big shot has come when Kelling's oh, on a big shot himself. So and the break opportunity 62. has been carved out. Only one dart has been missed at double in this match, and that was by Kelling. Gervin buys himself Aim a couple, the and he uses them to Nathan great effect, Gerber. and that was the moment that he'd been waiting for, that he'd been playing for, and now the stats do bear out the scoreline because Gervin, like tickling a ton first. in the average, Raymond. leads a match 3-2 and will throw for his second win in as many matches this morning. Well, it's fairly similar to a player playing Roger Federer at Wimbledon. If you can do everything with the serve, then you're OK. But the second you get broken, that's when you begin to fear. And this is perhaps case apparent here for Jamie Kelling. 24. And that has opened up a huge gap for Gervin. And he's going to take full advantage. 180. A little fist pump there. He's very happy with himself. Three maximums in this match. For the 19 year old. 140. Right, Kelling. He's in danger of finding himself cut adrift, but it's Lauby and Gervin that are making their moves this morning. 136. We are on course to see the best performance that we have in this group so far. 100. Yet to see an average above a ton in week nine. If Gervin can convert this. 62. He will return. Kenning all the way back on 212. 135. Nathan, to eight. complete a superb victory. The performance of the week thus far. Go Double four does match. it for Nathan Gervin. And it is Gervin. the first ton plus average we've seen in week nine here at the Super Series. An average bang on 102 for the man from Arbroath, it was Struth Darts, the man from Arbroath. Three maximums to his name, four from seven on the doubles, a 62 high out. Jamie Kelling did a lot of his work with the darts, but when he was broken in leg five, you felt that that was the turning point in that match. So victory for Nathan Gervin with our first ton topper of the week. We're going to take a short break. When we return, Chris Murphy's going to be talking to Avi on the balcony, and then we'll see Stefan Belmont and Sebastian Biowetsky end round two.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we've just seen our first ton-topping average of the week from Nathan Gervin. There you can see a 102 average from the Scotsman. Murph, a really impressive display from him. And as you said in comms, it's him and Lauby making strides, isn't it, this morning? Yeah, they've really stood up the pair of them and kind of set the standard, laid down their markers as the two to be in this group. Um, and I think, you know, we expected it from the pair of them. And they've certainly delivered this morning. And, you know, Lauby's played well. Gervin's kind of gone to that other level. People used to talk about it. Players sending out a statement and the next one coming up and bettering that. And it's getting very, very interesting, very exciting. And I know we've touched on it already, but with Nathan Gervin at such a young age, still just 19 years of age, it's really impressive, isn't it? Even when he falls behind, he's still got that strong mentality and it, he doesn't let it phase him. Yeah, Scottish grit, Henry called it, and I think that's, that's maybe part of it, but I wonder how much credit we have to give to Alan Souter as well, a, a product of his academy up there in Abrove. So, yeah, I think that Nathan Gervin is really mature beyond his years. It's, it's the way I keep mentioning it in comms, or the way he steps back when he needs to. He, he doesn't need to that rhythm to throw his darts at all at the same pace. And maybe that's a bit of a difference between him and Lauby. And for me, it might be what takes him over the line in this group. Absolutely. And I think it's really interesting listening to Alan Souter and the way he talks about the academy products that he brings through. And it's he doesn't set standards for them. He wants them to set them themselves so that they can show how desire, you know, how much desire they actually have. Yeah, and he, he certainly shows a lot of desire. You see him, don't you? We saw it yesterday getting angry with himself sometimes as well. He demands the best of himself at such a young age and I think he controls it well and it all bodes very very well for a bright future in the sport. Most definitely. Right then let's get into our next match. It is Belmont against Biowetsky. Thank you very much Abby and this is another one of these intriguing moving day battles. Sebastian Biowetsky can put himself within two points of Lauby and Gervin with victory here. Belmont can also put himself on to six points, but what it would do is create a gap between the top two and the rest of the pack for the conclusion of round seven of week nine of Group A, the halfway stage of this particular group. Belmont lost out in a last leg decider against Danny Lauby in his first game. Bioretsky was beaten by the brilliant Gervin by four legs to one. So how will these two gents respond? We are about to find out. We conclude round two of day two here in this particular group. Chris Murphy has won the race to make it down from the Gantry to the country hey, box in Stephen time for the first, first leg. Then and I was on. just mentioning in the introduction, big game for Bioretsky. If Stefan Belmont gets a win here, you're going to see gaps begin to appear in the group. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you, Gervin and Lauby are making their move at the top. And remember, there is only one place to play for at finals night in this group. So people are going to start getting cut adrift. Jamie Kelly has already lost his first couple of matches of the morning and Belmont could follow suit. A lot will become apparent for only the end of this game. 100. Looking forward to the next one, Gervin Lauby. Oh, he won? Top of the table tussle. That really could... Determine who is favourite to progress at the end of tomorrow. The winner advancing straight through to finals night, just as Andy 80. Hamilton did last week. Having two days off and coming back fresh, rested and ready on Saturday in front of the live crowd. And if you want to be in that live crowd, 60. do visit dartshop.tv and apply for your free tickets. Yes, you did not hear me wrong. They are free of charge. 60. I wonder if uh, the two days off out of all the players would suit Lauby. I know he's been in the country for about a week or so now, but possibly with jet lag and things like that, maybe so as much rest time as possible would suit him. Yeah, possibly. I think any player would rather be safely through than having to come back. I know Conor Heenan 
was looking like Ooh, topping Groot A last week. It turned out that he blitzed through Group B and hit a nine data in the process. Also, 115 average in one of his matches as well. 116 will be the number for Belmont when he returns. And he'll be under some pressure. Couldn't make the adjustment. And Biowetsky will get a chance. 60. Sebastian, you require 100. To break the throw in the first leg. 105 for it. Trouble 15. Now he decides to go trouble 19 for double 14. Nine. What I don't get there, Henry, is that he Seven went you for it 56. and then didn't know what double he'd left. Surely he knew what he was doing. I could only assume it was maybe checking the dart was in the treble. 46. That's not in the double. Sebastian, you require 40. And going that route, he's left himself in a bit of an awkward spot, having missed inside. So choosing to split. Game shot in the first leg. Turn to be Sebastian turned out Biowetsky. To be a good choice, and it's a break of throw. And Biowetsky has the lead. And the Swiss Stefan Belmont needs all the help he can so get at the moment. Sebastian to throw first. Game on. And even though he got the right outcome. For me, Sebastian went the one way about it. What? As you say, anyway, he hits a max there, so perfect start to leg two. Yeah, but the, the double right 14, the breakdown's not great, and most players will tend to go trouble 15 tops in that scenario, and I think the way that Sebastian darts go in, the tops is a better double for him than the double 14 if he misses. Yeah, and it's breaks down three wire. times rather than... 59. Just the ones, tops, tens, and fives. Obviously, not a fan of double seven. He chose to split, didn't he? When he came back. But he's in a very good spot in this match and in this leg. 100. Just one point behind, but he has the advantage of throw. And we're starting to see better stuff, I think, as this group has gone on. And it's interesting, actually, 98. because we pondered at the start of yesterday evening. Whether actually playing at 6 o'clock last night would suit the players. It's a more usual time, particularly those who are debuting in the tournament. That hasn't been the case, has it? It's been better stuff 60. this morning than we did last night. So I suppose you could also put into play that the debutants have had a night here already, so they'll be more acclimatised to this environment. The Alexi wasn't even going to consider going for the finish, and that was the right play because he leaves double 12 after 12. But they've all had now a night to settle into this tournament this process and maybe for the debutants coming straight back the next Six, morning might be the best Sebastian thing because they just go 24. straight into the cycle once again as Biowetsky wants double 12 for 2-0 now it leg. goes 2-0 to Biowetsky he's halfway towards the finishing line halfway towards eight points and a crucial win for him just to Stephens keep taps for the on. two at the top considering that they play in the next match. One will get on to 12. But he'll just keep himself handy. Just four points behind whoever does do 100. that. Because if you lose this one, the potentially six points behind at this stage could be a big bridge to gap. 140. Yeah, it's the last match of the seventh round of games in this group. So around the halfway stage of the group. Really, really well timed, well positioned game, that isn't it? For tussle between the top two. I think the victory for, for Biowetsky here really keeps five. him just clinging to the coattails of that top two, but any other outcome, it starts to become a bit of a two horse race, seemingly. And I wasn't expecting that 100. to happen today. We said yesterday that. Everyone was cancelling each other out. It feels like the opposite. When you've got two players making a charge, one will cancel the other one out one in our next match. So it doesn't matter too much if they're winning around them. They might be the player who wins his games against all the other opponents that, that keeps himself in contention. Biowetsky losing two. Nathan Gervin. 136. Belmont losing to Danny Lauby. 96. Stephen, you require 101. He's in sells tops if he returns. Belmont returns for the 101. Shovel 19. 
Five to seven, so Bioetsky will return for top for the double break in a final lead. 40. Game on the third. He's on easy street at the moment Sebastian here. Sebastian Bioetsky. Sebastian Bioetsky. Fourth legged Sebastian to throw first. Game on. One hundred and thirty nine. Well, start as well to what he hopes is the last leg of the match. Been a, an avalanche of excellence from Biowetsky. One hundred. And it's no joke for Stefan. Eighty five. Sorry, I bet. Better stop now, Henry, with the uh, cheesy Swiss puns. But it's the pole that's on a roll right now. Come on, Henry, join in, join in. I'm just, I'm just going to sit in the corner Hen and just. Henry Deacon speechless. 59. Never heard of it. Some people want more of it. <laughs> Well, 140. Sebastian Biowetsky wants more of this today, averaging more than 90. 3 0 to the good, even Belmont on 1 2 1 here. I'd favour Biowetsky to win the leg. And in fairness, it's actually been a better performance for Stefan Belmont in terms of averages. But he needs this 1 2 1 to keep him in the game. Treble 17 would have left the ball, and that could be the last dart he throws in this match as Biowetsky returns to 78. Well, Labby and Gervin have set the standard. But it's 20 for tops. Go and now the real the Sebastian Biowetsky has stood up and shown what he can do. A 4-0 whitewashed win over Switzerland's Stefan Belmont, who was just not in contention in that game, despite an OK performance by his standards that we've seen so far here at the Super Series. Biowetsky producing an average just shy of 94, hitting 50% of his double attempts and a high 78 to win the match. He keeps himself in contention towards the top of the table, but next it is a tussle at the peak of the pile when Nathan Gervin takes on Danny Lauby.
Hello, good morning and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here in Portsmouth. We've just witnessed our second whitewash win of the morning. Sebastian Biawetsky with a 4-0 win over Stefan Belmont. As you can see there, a much more clinical display from the 18-year-old pole. 50% checkout percentage there four out of eight on his doubles an average just shy of 94 that's more like the Biowetsky we were expecting to see this week let's take a little look at what that does to the league table then heading into our next match two players on double figures Nathan Gervin and Danny Lauby both on 10 points and it's Belmont and Kelling who had just cut adrift slightly now on four points of course coming into today's session it was quite congenial Suggested in the league table, but players starting to pull away now in first and second, and of course, Biawetsky on eight points there as well. So, next up for you, we've got a top of the table tussle. It is Gervin and Lauby. As we've said, these are the two players who've really set the standard this morning. So, let's see who can pull away and be the first to get onto 12 points in the company of Chris and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. As you say, it's the top of the table clash which could set in stone the direction of travel over the next day and a half. A victory for one of these will put them on to 12 points, but the player who's defeated may see a queue around them for well, the spots just behind. Yeah, when the pair met yesterday, it did go the way of Danny Lauby, and it was a 4-3 thriller as well, but We've seen better performances from the pair of them this morning than we saw last night. And perhaps this could be the game of the week so far. It feels like the most important so far. It feels like it's Nathan to throw Whoever first. Whoever wins it game on. will be clear at the top of the table with that two-point cushion over their opponent and four-point cushion over Sebastian Biowetsky. Just a word, Henry, on his victory because that could prove to be very significant as well. Had he lost that game, he may have been cut adrift, but an emphatic performance, not just in terms of keeping himself clinging to the coattails of this pair Three, in the league table, but in terms of making a statement to say, look, I'm one of the big three in this group. Exactly that. And, of course, if he doesn't win the group, you want to finish in the top three because it puts you into... Group B on Thursday and Friday evening. And we've got a really, really interesting list of players that will join us later on this week. We've got the likes of Scott Williams, Matthew Dennant joining us in the evening session. Aaron Monk's going to join us. Colin Osborne will be in that Group B as well. And Kurt Parry and Lee Cox will be joining us for the remainder of the week. But the focus here is very much at the top end of Group A to see who could get themselves a step closer towards Saturday night's final oh, on the £5,000 top prize. Gervin, the better start of the two, leaving 93 after 12 with a throw. 180, you require 93. He's the aggressor in this one, the man from Angus. Fifty-three. And lad, the luxury of laying up there to leave himself on top. Slauby, not yet in this race. He does make his presence felt with a two and treble turn. 14. Game Tops shot goes the first up leg. and Gervin goes Ethan ahead. Gervin. Second leg is Danny to throw first. One hundred. Gervin looking for that little bit of revenge on Lauby for that defeat yesterday. 46. One. They know what the pair the And Lauby showcasing that big 180 hitter. Well, he can be. 140. It was actually Alex Small who took that mantle yesterday, wasn't it? Nine he hit across the day. Gervin's already hit five himself today. And it feels early on the game we expected it to be. Sometimes these top of the table Ooh, clashes five. when two and players play well can sometimes peter out as a consequence of its significance. Does it feel like it in the early throws of this one? one? I suppose it would be repercussions if 
now if he was to lose this game. We'd go two points behind Gervin in the group. Sixty. Danny requires sixty-four. Well, it's he who's got a healthy lead in leg two. Another and the double. Game shot the second. And that's leg. the finish that really suits Danny his Lowry. style. All in the same segment. All in the same section. All in. And all square. So look, it's Nathan to throw first. Game on. And the pair cancelling each other out early on here, as they have done in the group. And importantly for Lauby is if he can get a victory here, is to, is to get one by a big scoreline and a big margin because they may be level on points. But in terms of leg difference, oh, Nathan Gerben is on plus 11 on the legs difference. Danny Lauby plus four. And that will begin one to come into play, especially if we get the kind of tight finish we expect in this group between the pair come tomorrow. 58. Don't think that your uh, repercussion pun went Nine, unnoticed, Henry, six. in the previous leg. We will stop with the, uh, 59. the drum puns. I think we've exhausted that particular avenue. Broken the drum, Henry. You just can't beat it. I thought we were drumming up support. 58. Check social media for that. Plenty of support for this pair, though. 93. Because they're lighting up the Super Series today. One hundred and forty. In particular, really producing some good stuff. We saw that first ton topping average of the day just a couple of games ago from the 80. Scott. Nathan, you require forty nine. Two exactly the average in his four two win over Kelling. Double sixteen to lead here. 33. Danny Rock 112. You thought that first dart was a nice lie there for Lauby. So Gervin's going to return for 52. 2 8 for a 2 Nathan 1 lead. 16. Game shot and I don't know day. about you, but I've just seen Nathan over the last Gervin. three or four visits a bit more of that Gervin grit again. He hit that 140 and he gave it some, didn't he? He's Got himself stoked up, fired well, up. Danny to throw first. And that could game be a on. game changer because we saw in his previous encounter against Jamie Kelly, the game kind 60. of changed as soon as he got into that kind of spirit, that kind of mood. One hundred. Just get the sense that both players are aware of the importance of this match. There is a little One monitor in the practice hundred. room. They, they see the, the other games and they will have had a look at the league table. They'll know their spots. They'll know what's at stake. Six. Whoever wins it is in the healthiest position after. They've played eight matches. One hundred. In this group. And it's about whether... Biawetsky, when he takes on Kelling in a couple of games' time, can really make it two groups of three. And for Biawetsky, he'll prefer that split because he doesn't have to worry behind his shoulder then. It's about attacking the two in front. One's going to take the other out here. That's the one advantage for Biawetsky. At the minute, it looks like it's going to be Gervin to do the damage against the darts unless... Larry could have got the treble 19 to leave himself Thank double 12. So a big break opportunity coming up now for Gervin. 20 and tops. Well, the problem for both players is the darts stand up a lot. So 60 is not a nice two dart finish for them. I think Gervin intentionally there 52. has tried to go to one side of the 20 and he's gone too far. 42. But it hasn't cost him. He gets a clear Nathan, target. You require a clear look at that double top. And so Lauby's missed two darts for 2-2. Two, two. And Gervin Game stepped the in. Flag. Yes, he Nathan can. Gervin. He leads 3-1. And he's one leg away now from seeing a crucial 4-1 victory, which would put him if onto 12 Nathan points. To throw first. And more importantly, would race Game away on. with the legs difference, which by the end of this group, could count as a 
de facto bonus point. Alex Small against Stefan Belmont coming up next. We can't yet discount Small from that race. If he can Four, get victory five. against Belmont, certainly would put himself in contention for a, a go at Group B. Four, Z4. Just a reminder for those viewers who are maybe unfamiliar with the, the process here. There are 12 players per week, six of them playing Group A. The winner of that group advances straight through to finals. Right, second and third going to Group B. And the remaining players go into Group C, in which two qualify from six. Six. Four incoming players. And in Group B, three qualify from five. So that's the advantage of finishing in the top three in Group A at the end of tomorrow's action. 58. Six players then contest finals night. The winner picked up £5,000 and a place at Champions 58. Week, which will be played in exactly the same way. But the prize money is multiplied. The champion on Champions Week will get... Twenty thousand pounds, a record thirty-eight in this event. Big, big money on offer here at the Super Series, giving players outside the 40. PDC one to eight incredible opportunities. And the winner of that will not just win the twenty grand that they win from Championship; they win the five grand from 60. winning their week as well. So you'd win twenty-five thousand pounds, all told, in prize money. And that pays Ooh, pretty much for your tour for the entire Thank year, and then one, some. Well, this is for the match. To do it in style. And he's going to get another go, whatever he leaves here. All he has to do is really stay straight. Hasn't managed it. Makes it a little bit more difficult and offers a little bit of optimism to his opponent. The door is ajar one, for Lauby, but he couldn't one, crank it open. And so this for a crucial victory to put himself on a dozen points. 65. And Tops, Tops nearly and did it. Lauby needs the 155, the biggest finish of the week so far. Needed the treble 19 Nine, for a dart the double Nathan, in the same segment. 40. But it's top of the shop to go top of the table. Clear at the top of the table. Game shot on the match. And Nathan Gervin Nathan grabs Glory. Gervin. A 4-1 success against his nearest rival. He separates the pair at the top of the table and leads it by two points. It wasn't the high-quality affair that we might have expected, but Gervin did more than enough to put Lauby away and put himself two points clear at the summit of Group A. Coming next, Alex Small looking to keep himself in contention by beating Stefan Belmont. Can he do it? We'll find out after this.
Hello and welcome back to the Live Lounge here in Portsmouth. There's no doubt about it, the standard of darts has certainly risen this morning. Perhaps not highlighted as much as we expected it to be in that last match as Nathan Girvin ran out 4-1 winner over Danny Lauby. An 80 average from both of them in that match. But Nathan Girvin hitting 50% of his doubles. That was really the difference in that match. Just the 180 that coming from Danny Lauby in that one. Four 140 plus visits from Nathan Girvin though. And as we move into the next match, let's take a little look at the table and how that's affected things at the top of the standings. Of course, Nathan Girvin now moves on to 12 points. He's got a far superior leg difference as well if you look at that column. Danny Lauby on 10 points, Sebastian Biawetsky on eight. So we're starting to see people moving away in the top of the order. Jamie Kelling and Stefan Belmont of course falling away but it is Stefan Belmont who's up next against Alex Small a real contrast of styles in this match Small coming through a last leg decider when the two played last night will it be another tightly contested match here this morning let's find out in the company of Chris and Henry Thank you very much Abby and it's the biggest game of the week so far for Alex Small you sense he's got to get victory in this one to keep pace with the three above him in the table. A six-point gap as things stand to Nathan Gervin at the top of the group. You could bring it back to four, but bring himself back level with Biawetsky, who currently occupies third spot in the group, and that could be crucial come the end of the week in terms of placings in Group B and C. And you also sense a big game for Stephen Bellman, because if he harbors ambitions of being in Thursday and Friday's night session, and you sense he's going to have to get victory hey, here. And there is a danger first. here that him Game and on. Kelling are dangerously getting cut adrift from the rest in the table, not just for top spot, but for third. Yeah, Six. huge game for Stefan Belmont. And that's what happens in this Group A, isn't it? In, in this format, every game just takes on an extra bit of importance. And it can go one of two ways. It can bring the best 100. out in a player or it can weigh heavy on their shoulders. And we've seen Belmont lose his first couple of matches today, including one of them to nil. The same goes for Small in terms of being beaten to nil. So he did win his opening match of the morning. And he's still in the race. I think Belmont would have, I'll put it bluntly, absolutely 55. no chance of finishing top if he loses this match. That was blunt. It was also correct, so put on your pipe and smoke it. 60. I've been told. 100. Well, Belly Belmont already behind. Looking to leave some kind of finish, a treble would get him in similar range One to Alex Small, like who just has to keep serving, winning on throw, and he will pick up points in this one. 58. Stephen Yerrick, 141. Here comes Belmont looking to break with a big finish. Well, here he comes. Belly's going to get you. Go and he has got him. Stephen leg. Belmont takes out 1-4-1 one, one to break throw. But it's a much needed victory in prospect here. And that so was a much Stephen's needed finish because first. Small was in a good Game spot on. in that leg. Is that the spark for Stefan that he needed? Is that the blue touch paper lit for Belmont? 48. But how many times do we see this, Chris? A finish like that, the 1-4-1 one, one, to break throw, and then they open up the Trebler's visit. Yeah, often, though, it's done when a player exerts a lot of exuberance and energy in a celebration. Stefan's not that kind of bloke, is he? It's just not how he rolls. 100. He's very, very... I don't know, what's the word to describe him? 60. His, his demeanour is almost monotone, if that makes sense. He doesn't change. Wouldn't want to play him at poker. He's an even kilter. But in this 100. format, probably works long term. 
because you don't want to get yourself too high and too low because you can get you're going to get many of them Ford. over the course of a week. Yeah, middle of the road. That's where you need to be. Mind you, if you stand in the middle of the road, you probably get run over by both sides, don't you? Ford. What are you talking you want... about? You're driving for a minute. Well, Belmont in the driving seat in this one. Nine, two, one. Whopper of a checkout, and that's something we've seen a few times today. The one four one to go with a one four two from Alex Small himself earlier on, and the one four nine from Danny Lauby against Belmont. Sixty. Speaking of big finishes, Henry. One hundred and seven. Here comes another. The biggest fish in the darting sea. Was almost caught by Alex Small. Stephen, you were caught. Didn't mean that one. I meant Stephen Belmont's one five two. Inevitable. Oh, Stefan. Well, he's surrendered that brilliant position he put himself in with the 1 4 1, hasn't he? And it with a lackluster leg after 18 darts only on 1 2 4. And Alex Small, he's trying to find a route to this double eight. Seven hasn't two. managed it, so Belmont could Seven yet save record, himself with another three figure out. Well, the flight of that first dart double eight kicked up and obscured the bed. Belmont's going to have a clear dart at Bull. 92. Good lead. And it can require eight. Double four, though, for Small. Game for parity. And it is parity. Alex Cancels Small. out that break of throw. And will throw to go ahead in the match. That one dart well, at Bull's eye. Will that reverse. come back to Horn Belmont? Not that you'll see it from his emotion, I suppose. Being a Swiss, I suppose it, he should be a bit neutral about things. You feel happy about that first visit, though. So he tries to obtain a second break from Small. 121. Just wonder whether that third dart there was thrown too quickly, whether he was getting too caught up in the emotion of the. First two trebles going in. We see it sometimes with Ricky Evans. 100. Fellow speedster. 100. Always good to watch, aren't they? The fast players, they do bring a certain extra excitement to the hockey. Have you got a, a favourite player? I know you're a... You don't have to talk about anyone 60. here at the Super Series where you will remain professionally impartial, but... On the PDC circuit, is there someone that you like watching more than anybody else? 137. I'm going to be really boring here, Murph. Go on. Just, I just like to watch. I, I know that sounds really boring. I know it's boring. I know it's, I know it's one seal, but... 86. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Double 16. 54. Well, that certainly wasn't a boring route. Although I did enjoy Peak Mensa. Always good fun, wasn't it? Peak Mensa. Yeah, very entertaining. I'll, I'll agree with that. Interesting route here. Bullseye. 100. Well, he... I think you required 32. Did the Fleetwood Mac there, didn't he? He went his own he way. He the third leg. Alex Small. Well, Alex Small leads the way. And he breaks the chain. That's the first hole we've seen in this match. Four look at Stefan to throw first. Game on. Small in charge. And remember what we spoke about at the start of this contest, that it does risk Stefan Belmont getting cut adrift in the field here. 57. Gaps. Are beginning to appear on moving day here. We are halfway through the action. Bielwetski and Jamie Kenning will complete One. the third round of fixtures in match nine. And then Alex Moore will return to the hockey to take on Nathan Gervin, the man at the top of the group. So if he can get victory in this one, he can half put his destiny back in his own hands if he could then become the first player to beat Nathan Gervin today. And it makes love very interesting at the top of the group. 100. Especially if Bielwetski can get the better of Kelling. 95. Just a little bit of a jump in that last throw there from Small. 
How much did he pocket Henry for that winning the uh, Champion of Champions? Do you know? Ninety-eight. I'll take your silence as no, but I will uh, tap it into my uh, ten thousand pounds, I believe. I'm being told by a fifty-nine a learned friend in the production gallery. Forty-four. A little bit less than your day fee, Murph, isn't it? Small fortune, you might say. <laughs> one hundred. Could add require one hundred. Another fifty percent to that at the end of this week as well. Wouldn't be a bad few weeks. Alex Small, would it? 42. But Belmont looking to put himself back in contention in this match. 44 required. Options here. You often see four tops or 12 double 16. Now, I actually like the route Game 16 the or 8 flag. on that Stephen goal. You see Belmont. many players on 46 will go 10 or a 6, just throw in between, see where it goes. Why not on 44 do the same on the other side of the board? If it's Alex to throw first. I can see the reasoning, absolutely. Aim for the middle wire and... One I mean, that's because I'm rubbish at darts, so I need a, a double-sized segment to throw at, probably. These players shouldn't be missing big numbers, should they? You won a trophy this year, Murph. Stop underselling yourself. Nine, two, one. One hundred and twenty-three. The only medals I usually got was for trying. 140. We'll see. We'll, we'll see who gets the uh, employee of the week here at the Super Series. 32. You are very trying, Henry, to be honest. Belmont trying to find a way back into the game, and that 140 gives him a bid to break here. Maybe we've been guilty of writing 42. him off too soon. Stephen, you record 130. A case of Moreno Blome syndrome. Doesn't have to go for it, so went across for trouble 18, which would have left him a dart at double 90. eight, so moves across. For 12 to leave him top, so Potty's return, and this is for a crucial break for Stefan Belmont. Yeah, much higher standard when the oh, pair met yesterday. Four. Small came out of 4 3 so winner. It was Belmont who had the darts in that match. Are we going to see the reverse here? Double 10. Game shot the And he gets left. it, and he's one Stephen away, Belmont. and he's throwing for a first win of the morning. Lost 4 3 to Lauby. Lost. 4 0 to be a Stefan to throw first. Can he win? Game on. In one of the matches in this kind of mini league between the bottom three. Eighty five. Fourteen dart break as well, that for Belmont. And I must say one hundred and he's getting better as the day's gone on. He was disappointing in that first defeat against Danny Lowby, but then you follow it up with a, even though he, he lost to, to Biowetsky, it was an average of 88.4, now averaging 90 in this one. So we spoke oh, about the slow too. start yesterday. In small increments, he's getting better and better game upon game. Small just dropped his feet right by, dropped his dart, sorry, right by a, uh, Belmont's feet there. One hundred. Saw from that camera angle, him picking up the arrow. Didn't stop. Stefan recording a ton, and he's looking in good shape to get that victory. And his average is now over the ninety mark. Just to elaborate on that point that Henry just made. Not yet. One hundred. Forty-four. Well, you may see Belmont take out 76. the finishing double. He returns for 76 for the match. Well, doesn't have to go 25 on ball. He went treble 17 for double 36. 12. And gets himself back on tops upon his return. 140. Bit of pressure, but is it enough? 40. 
to knock Stefan out of his stride. Tops he wants. Now he wants double ten. Good and he gets it. And Stefan Belmont, Stephen Belmont gets his first win of the day. And it's a decent display to do so as well. But it's a win that probably helps Sebastian Biowetsky and the top two, Lauby and Gervin, because it keeps Alex Small at bay ahead of Biowetsky's match with Jamie Kelling. An average just shy of 89 for Belmont in that one. Four out of nine on the doubles and a brilliant 1-4-1 one, one checkout in there as well. Victory for Belmont for the first time this morning. Coming next, it is Biowetsky against Jamie Kelling. Hello and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here at the Live Lounge in Portsmouth where we've just seen a really solid performance from Switzerland's Stefan Belmont in order to dispose of Alex Small with an 88.47 average, no 180s but 4 out of 9 on the outer ring, a 44% checkout percentage from him to get his first win of the morning on the board. A really important win. And as Chris Murphy said, it's a really important win for him, but also at the top of the table, as we can see, it keeps Alex Small on six points. So it keeps the pressure off Nathan Gervin and Danny Lauby in those top two spots in the table. Next up, we do have the man who's in third spot at the moment. He's looking to reach double figures. Sebastian Biawetsky is taking on Jamie Kelling, who's still looking for his first win of the morning in this one. The pole, of course, clinical in his last match. But when the two played last night, it was Jamie Kelling who was the 4-1 winner as the Polish 18-year-old missed nine of his 10 attempts at double in that one. So for this match, let's rejoin our commentary duo of Chris Murphy and Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Abby. And for Jamie Kelling, you sense that he needs to win this, maybe not for the race to win the group, but for the race to be in third place. Sebastian Biowetsky can get himself level with Danny Lauby on 10 points with victory in this one. And with a superior legs difference, he would actually jump the American up the table and only two points behind Nathan Gervin at the summit. 
The 18 year old from Lodz in Poland, nicknamed Bolt. New Kevin caught a finalist in 2022, taking on the 33 year old from Andover, JK, Jamie Kelling. Okay, first look at Sebastian and to throw first. The Kelling having won two of his first three, he has subsequently lost four in a row. And so for him, it will be about 36. stopping the rot. But Chris Murphy alongside me, I, I want to play a game of darting, take your pick. Look at the hypothetical scenarios, looking at this group One table. Gervin allowed be definitely in the race for top place. Without saying yes or no, as per the usual rules of the game, Sebastian Biowetsky in the mix of the top. Definitely. 60. Stefan Belmont. Unlikely. Would that be a similar answer for Alex Small? It 140. Would be. And in terms of Jamie Kelly in the race for third place. Third place. Um, I would, yeah, I would agree no, with what you said that he has to win this match to be in that race. I'll um, let you off that stutter there. The gong nearly came out. 57. I'll gong you in a minute. But I'll tell you what, the performance levels have picked up from everybody today. The overall the average eight. in this group has gone up by a full 1.3 points. And every single player except Danny Lauby is One currently averaging more than they did yesterday. In fact, every player since, apart from Danny Lauby has got a better finish, a finishing percentage than they did yesterday as well. So they've all turned up for this Tungsten Tuesday. Jamie and Sebastian Bieletsky, the pole, is looking to move position here. And join the aforementioned Lauby on 10 Steve points in second Sebastian place in the group. He would be ahead of him on leg difference as well if he got a win against Kelling here. And everybody's been beating Jamie. Tops for the pole to draw first blood. Jamie required 40. And everybody will be supporting Jamie in this game. Game shot the well, first That's a very leg. good point, as Kelling Jamie does take Kelly. the first leg, because not only will the players below Sebastian be wanting Kelling to win to stop him pulling away, but the two ahead of him will want to keep Second him at bay as well. Jamie to throw first. You're right. Game every on. single player in that practice room will want a Kelling win in this game. The most popular man in Portsmouth right now is Jamie Kelling. Oh, that's not hard to be honest. I thought it was you. Oh, wish. Have you not seen the security that has to drag me out of the venue? You know, people throwing stones and rocks at me. I wish security would drag you out of the venue, to be honest, but... <laughs> I, will, uh, one. I will put up with you for a, an hour or so more. Is that why you're leaving us tomorrow? One hundred. need a break. We do have a special guest commentator for the remainder of the week. He'll be joining me Thursday through to the finals on Saturday. We will not reveal their identity as of yet. You'll have to wait One and see you don't have to wait and see for some brilliance from Bioetsky because that maximum puts him on one two four for a potential break of throw in a leg where it looked like jamie kenning was quite comfortable with the dart looking to open up a two nil lead i will give you a clue about that commentator all i'll say is they're better at darts than i am narrows it down doesn't it bullseye Game the second a brilliant leg. one two four sebastian check out Bioetsky. for sebastian Bioetsky to level up the match and cancel out that break of throw just as kelling thought he might be getting away it's a dozen data like it's it was actually to throw first. 304 in six darts spellbinding stuff just going back to that previous comment to be six. fair that's not a hard assumption to make i think i'm the only person sat in a commentary box that's Potentially worse. Thanks for that. One confidence hundred. building. Although talking about people away from the dartboard are good at darts. One of our referees here, Josh Clough, has actually looked to get in his second max of the match. We've seen him referee here a few times. Made the last sixteen of the WDF British Classic at the weekend. Did he really? Sixty. Congratulations to Josh.
Unfortunately, Owen Binks is not blessed with the same level of tungsten talent. Oh, T3. He is worse than me, I promise you that. We should have a staff tournament, I think. And we should stream it live here on Sporty Stuff TV. Can we just make some 100. rules? Webby, Nico and Mace are barred. Yeah, fair enough. Sorry, guys. Also, we are, we're only actually free on Sundays, aren't we? So I'm not sure we've got the time to stream it live. Also, we need to sort out the oh, format see. because we only get Sundays off and I feel like we may disturb the Monday morning session if we play best of seven. It's all right, Henry. I'm sure you'd enjoy the four legs that you played. A 101 for Kelling when he comes back, and it could be another break in this seesaw affair. Kelling has again has started a match well. Can he convert it to victory this time? Still on this. Treble 20 for double 18. 45. And you Spicy feel like Seb could knock the stuffing out of Kelling here if he can get this 118. Tops. 78. That would have hurt. Jamie required 56. A 1, 2, 4, followed by a 1, 1, 8. But it wasn't to be. And Kelling is back on tops. 60. But not back on top. Sebastian, you require 40. And so Bioetsky for 2, 1. One left. Game and there it the is. Sebastian and it was Bielewski. the midway point of Kelling's last clash with Nathan Gervin, where things began to change quite sizably. Well, he was in a nice best. enough position, but then it was actually a break from Gervin in that last match. It was a hold for Bielewski in this one after Kelling had the opportunity to break. And we saw it just go Six. downhill from there for Kelling. And I, and I just wonder now what his mindset's going to be he knows winning the group is probably out of the question. 100. If he loses this one, qualifying through to group B is going to be incredibly difficult. And so you sense that maybe now he's just playing Six. to get himself in the, the best possible state of mind going into group C on Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Of course, any of these players are capable of having a fantastic day and winning four or maybe all five matches. And that would be the plan tomorrow for players that seemingly out of that race 58 but at the end of this match every player would have played eight games we'll be past the halfway stage in the group and the table will start to really take shape 56. we know six nathan gervin is going to sit on top of it and he's going to have the chance to pull four points player in his next match when he faces alex small 100 and will he be two points ahead of both danny lauby and Sebastian Biowetsky, who's looking to join Lauby on 10 with victory here. Nine, you cannot six. undersell the psychological effect of going two games clear, effectively, in terms of victories at the top of the group. Jamie Kelling. One, with that maximum, it's completely changed the complexion of the leg. Brilliant, wasn't it? He laid down the post and then put one in the middle. Treble 19. Kelling will get the chance to 57. level the match. Jamie required 43. He's carved this opportunity out for himself. He deserves these two darts. A double 16. 11. But he doesn't take advantage. Sebastian and Bielewski returns to 52. For a two-leg buffer. 36. Jamie requires well, there 32. There are moments in this match. That are being missed Game by both players. It's leg. scrappy stuff Jamie at the Kelly. end of legs. One player two out of eight, the other two out of seven. And he might as well not even bother with the scoring phase. Like it's in each leg. Both throw getting first. darts at double, except that exceptional 12 dart leg for Sebastian Biowetsky earlier on. Still feel like he is the man in the box One seat, even more so now. Forcing the issue of Jamie Kelling. 100. Now, can we follow up, Seb? Can we follow up, Seb? Can we? 140. No. Or 
Five out of six ain't bad. To paraphrase the old meatloaf song. But he wants a win. He needs a win. 125. And he's 56 points away from going one away. Hey, T1. Sebastian, you require 56. Should get two here at tops. Will do. Game shot and does so. Left. And he is one away Sebastian from a victory that Bayer would Wetzel. put him on to 10 points. And it's a second 12 dart leg in the match for Sebastian Biowetsky. Sig leg is Jamie Two to throw absolutely first. outstanding legs and then a real battle in between. Forty-five. We're just feeling the elbow there. Jamie Kelling not happy with how he released that final dart. Ninety-nine. And I must say, it feels like the most smooth the Bioetsky action has been all week. He looks settled now. Uh, looks settled into this format now. Yeah, he averaged 94 in his 4-0 win against Belmont in the last game. 88.5 in his first game. 40. He's seemingly improving match by match. Fifty. Is that a smile of potential resignation from Jamie Kelling? 45. It's just been patchy, hasn't it, from him today? 58. He's got opportunities in this game. Yes, Bielewetsky has put in a couple of exceptional dozen darters, but... He's not 46. really been even average in the other legs in the game. Yeah, he's won one of them. Kelling needs to cash in. 45. And he's not doing that. Not only has he scored 45, but in doing so, he hasn't left the finish. Should be, or should have been looking at the bullseye. 45. And he's opened... Yeah, back up again for Kelling, and this is an, as unlikely a game you'd expect to go to a final leg decider, but we may well be heading there because he returns for 104, but under how much pressure? 100, Jamie, record 104. That'll do. Unless. Double 16. 72. That could be Sebastian the last start Jamie Kenning throws in this match. Well, he's had a 1 2 4. Can he add a 1 2 6 to crush Kelling? 101. Jamie requires the 32. Ball. Speaking of needing, Game that was threat. definitely required Jamie for Jamie Kelling. Kelling, who now needs to break Biowetsky in a last leg decider. To end this losing streak, to stop Seven it from being Sebastian extended to, to a run of five Game matches. On. A fortune-changing leg is upon us. Bioetsky can get himself onto ten points if he wins it. If he loses it, he could see himself six points adrift, potentially, if Nathan Gervin wins his next match against Alex Small. That's the next match we're going to... See on stage. BOS would then return to face Danny Lowby in game 11. 100. Nine, he's sick. Kenny's putting in a good leg at a good time. He's had the better of the early exchanges here. Only needs one treble to leave a, a finish when he comes back. Can he find it? 57. He couldn't, and that just offers the initiative to his opponent. Back in the box seat, Biowetsky. And racing away. Waving goodbye with a sublime setup shot. That puts him on the brink of a victory that would see him join Danny Lauby on 10 points.
100 and move up to second place in the table. Sebastian Yembrek, 140. Tops. Go for 10 points for Sebastian, Sebastian Biowetsky. He joins Lauby on that mark. He's now just two points behind Nathan Gervin at the top of the group, at the halfway stage in the group following the conclusion of the eighth round of matches with an 88.36 average, two maxes to his name, four from 14 on the checkouts, but that high out of one, two, four was the highlight. Two 12 darters in there as well as he deposes of Jamie Kelling by four legs to three. We're going to take a short break. When we return, we're going to see the table top in action, Nathan Gervin in action. He takes on Alex Small. Good morning and welcome back to the Moda Super Series here in Portsmouth. Well, we've spent a lot of this morning talking about Gervin and Lauby and how they've really raised their standards today. But Sebastian Biowetsky showing there in that last match that he can't be discounted either. As you can see, an 88 average from him in that 4-3 victory over Jamie Kellen. Four out of four, 14 on the checkouts. But two fantastic 12 darts, dart legs in there. One finished with a 1-2-4 on the bull early on in that match. Some spells of brilliance, and as Henry said, he seems to be settling into this format a bit more now. He just needs to show that level on a more consistent basis. And we'll take a little look at the table and what that does to the league standings. You can see there, it is Jamie Kelling, the only player now left on four points. He's in danger of being cut adrift. But next up, we're going to see Nathan Gervin and see if he can extend his advantage at the top of the table. He was a 4-1 victory la last night against Alex Small. He's dropped just four legs so far this morning. So can he cause another pose another win sorry in this league and really extend his advantage at the top of the standings. Let's rejoin our commentary team for this one. Thanks Abby. Nathan Gerben just having a little chat with our match referee, Owen Binks. Very interested in what he's got to say. 
It's annoying that, isn't it, when you can't be party to the conversation, but it's Nathan Gerben who's having a party in this group. And this would be another big step towards qualifying for finals night. See if he can get the better of Alex Small, who's thrown some big darts in his debut at the Super Series, but maybe hasn't got some results that his performances have merited. And I think the reason for that, Henry, you may beg to differ, but let's have the debate, is that hey, his runs Alex to have first. been Game on. just for a leg or two, and he hasn't managed to put it together really for the duration of a match. And the timing One as well. A lot of his spurts have been at the beginning of matches, and then he's just kind of tailed off a little bit towards the end where Gervin has found his gear around the middle stages. And then that's kind of spurred him on to victory. Nathan Gervin is looking for a sixth consecutive win. His last defeat Fifth, was in the six. middle of the action yesterday. That was a 4-3 loss to Danny Lowby in that top of the table clash. And if he can make it at Super 6, he is in a super position at the top of the table. Like You've become the man to beat. Well, Henry's just been talking about surges at the start of matches, and Alex Small is easily 61. in command in this opening leg. Leave 60, though, and that is a tricky little finish for him, the way his darts behave. 84. I think he recorded 60. So he's got looking at the left hand side now. Clear 40. target double ten. All right, leaving sixty when your opponent's not on a finish, when your darts do stand to attention like that. But I think we might see a few more players either starting to avoid leaving sixty or doing what Daryl Gurney has started like doing, which 20. is throwing the flatty. Throwing yeah, that dart differently to make sure that he oh, leaves a clear route to the bed. A small found. Double ten to win the first leg. Yeah, the way he does that. Second leg is For those who haven't seen it, there is a video somewhere on, on YouTube that he explains it himself, but he adjusts the position of where he holds the dart. Hold it near the throat nearer the front and it makes the dart actually lie perpendicular in the board rather than standing to attention and leaves double top open. One hundred. to be that good, eh? I wish. If I can hit a single twenty just regularly on my way to the 60, I'll be happy. 42. Fifty-seven. Person, I just go for the, the small bit of the 20 underneath the treble. Oh, oh my whoa. goodness me. Well, he's talked about comparisons to Nathan Gervin and Gary Anderson. We saw all three fall out, 19. didn't we, in the World Championship? And he decided... To switch there because he was on three one nine. We saw this a couple of weeks ago with Alan Tabben here at the Super Series where he got a, a couple in and it just spat back out the board. It's almost like someone's no, stood there with a hammer behind the board, isn't it? Like you get at the fairground, allegedly. Nine. No cuddly bears to be won here. Just a big, big money. Yeah, a little, little bit of help for Alex Small there. Can he make the most of it? Nine, two, three. Remember, twenty points ended up on the floor for Nathan Gervin. Well, he'd be bust anyway, wouldn't he? So it doesn't matter. One hundred and thirty-four. Nathan, you've got one hundred and thirty. The right play, Nathan. The right play. Can he make the right play with this one-one-four? Treble eighteen. Would have left him a dart at top. So Small will return three, for seventy-two for a two-nil lead, a break of throw, and there'll be some pricked up ears in the practice room. For this dart at tops. He's got enough space. 32. But he hasn't and managed to find that space. 58. And Gervin will get the chance. And 58, a much better finish than 60 with two darts. But he needs to use all three. Double 10. 48. Well, and it's a leg that he 40. will feel he should have dominated. Those two darts coming out of the treble 20. Will he... Have salt rubbed into the wound. No, he won't. Nathan, you're that second ten. dart again, awkward for Alex Small. The way it landed just below on the wire next to double 15, obscured the whole bed. 
One double two. Huge dart incoming. Six. And smaller would turn. And quite eight. No this score. One of those legs, I think, we Anything can characterise it as. And sometimes who wins those legs ends up winning the match. Game and Gervin the gets over leg. the line, averaging after two legs 60. Now, remember, he's had twice that amount on the floor. There we see it. And he could not believe it. Alec Didn't there. even know how to react. But he has leveled the match. And despite... 33. Having to throw 26 darts in that leg. It's all square. And he's back in business. 26 dart holder throw. That's more my kind of game, Murph. 45. Look at it, though. Alex Small is going to be absolutely devastated to have lost that leg. 45. Because let's not forget, if he can win this one, it puts him on eight points. And it just keeps him interested behind the duo of Bielecki and Lauby. Putting four behind Gervin. There's still a lot at Eight stake here five. for the Welsh. If he can get victory here, if he loses this, then his chances of winning a group A for me are over. And then he'd still have a bit B, of a race B on his six. hands to qualify into Group B. His next game after this would be against Sebastian Bielecki, one of the players on 10 points. That would be his final game of Tuesday here at the Super Series. So Fee, these are an, an important few minutes here for the Welshman, the champion of champions. Nine D eight. And he missed one hundred and twenty seven darts at double in that leg. Thirty seven. Nathan you requires seventy six. Gervin, back in pole position. Is there an issue here? I think it's a small score. Gervin does require 76. All is correct and in order now. Well, it's in 16, but he's left tops. They see he did actually have a clear aim. I thought he might have been wise to go for double 18 there, but having seen the different camera angle, you can see why he did leave tops. 139. Nathan, you require 40. And this is for a break. Game for a 2 1 leg. lead. And after Nathan Alex Small Gervin. squandered double after double in the last leg, it's Nathan Gervin who gets his nose in front at 2 1 and has the opportunity to open up a two leg well, lead. You see a bit first. more of a. Coin phrase of the week, the Gervin grit. He's trying to G himself up. But we mentioned in a day, you're going to get one really good performance, one bad performance, and a mean in the middle. If Gervin can get out of his poor performance of the day thus far with two 100. points, the rest of the group best take note. Thirty-nine. One hundred and thirty-four. Ninety-two. That first dart was a lovely lie. For Alex Moore on it. Invited two friends to enter the trouble 20 bed. 100. I like 120. A little bit of time on his side. Doesn't have to go the bullseye route if he does locate the treble 19. In fact, he won't even bother 57. with that. Well, he needed to stay straight to leave a finish. Now he needs a big treble. Twenty-four. I like it requires. And in 70. the end, even that wouldn't have left a finish after the second dart. So small on easy street in this Jordan leg, and he wins the leg with a seventy combo, breaks a throw, and takes control of the match. 
This is a really below par performance from Nathan Gervin. Yes, 120 points ended up on the floor, Game but the rest of it hasn't been sparkling by the Scott by any stretch of the imagination. 79. You feel as if he hasn't recovered from that yet, Gervin. Well, this might be some way to recover. 135. Or at least they stayed in the board this time. 60. Yeah, I think it's... Uh, I've been praising his mentality all week. If that is the case, then I think it's a shame because he, he won that leg. You've got to not aim for... You know, not let perfection get in the way of progress. And we saw last night in the now infamous... Lowby Gervin game when we saw the the ghost dart, we'll call it. One the response from Lowby. That's a response from Gervin. And he gave it some. He's trying to G himself up. He's trying to give himself something. Potential 11 dart leg incoming. And what a time it would be. 71. Well, he just it's waking up when he needs to, isn't it? Alec now has every reason to be alarmed. But here he comes. 180. So he's gone from pants to perfection. 20. Double five. 50. And it's forced the issue of Nathan Gervin. And so Alex uh, Small, courtesy of what he thought was a dead cat 180, returns to double leg. 14 and wins Alex the leg. Small. How one visit can change a match. Super leg is Nathan to throw first. Irvin has the darts to level the match, but he's got the work to do here. Hasn't lost so far today. 96. And he's been. Pretty emphatic. 60. In his victories. 4-1 against Sebastian Biowetsky. 4-2 against Jamie Kelling. And 4-1 against Danny Lauby. 100. And it would make the next game between Lauby and Biowetsky even more important. If Alex Small can convert this 3-2 lead into a, victory, into a victory. Because these two play each other in the next match. One of them would get on to 12. 58. Level with Gervin. Although... Scott has a huge advantage in the legs difference bracket. 37. And Small's 204 points away. Gervin needs a treble. 80. He's himself on 167. So what can Small set up? 100. It'll do. 167. Stay in the match. A supersized finish is beyond Nathan Gervin. Is the match beyond him? Oh, surely he won't stay there, will he? He has, and he's found it for tops. It looked like he blocked it, but the little step Nathan opened up the 28. angle. He's missed the match start. Game shot on the sick flare. And Nathan Gervin, Nathan Gervin will force Alex Small to serve this out. A leg with huge ramifications. Seven from final leg is Alex to throw first. Alex Small has the darts. If he can claim this leg, it puts 60. him onto eight points. Keeps himself in touch with the duo on ten who face each other in the next match. If Gervin can get over the line, he'll open up a four-point buff on Biowetsky and Lauby. Again with the aforementioned pair facing off in the 58. next match. This is where moving day comes into its own. 100. Small still in a good spot, but Gervin from anywhere can produce a big visit. We've seen it time and time again. The two treble turn in the last leg decider is like gold dust. 95. Well, that's a two treble turn, but not to the same effect that Gervin just produced. Coming downstairs in order to leave the best chance of leaving a finish. 87. But misfiring. And you would say that Small is still the favourite. 96. Huge last dart to leave 150, but Gervin 
could leave this One as handy as possible. What a time and I to hit a max. And he's going to get darts to win the match. Double 18 to do so. Well, it hasn't been Nathan Gervin at his brilliant Nathan best. But has he managed to ground to grind out a victory? Go it's glory for Scottish grit. Nathan victory Gervin. for Nathan Gervin, who keeps his unbeaten record today intact. But boy, did he have to work hard for that. He's shown a different side to his game there. Winning a battle, winning a fight, but winning again. 4-3 to Nathan Gervin over Alex Small. His closest rivals will duel next as Danny Lauby takes on Sebastian Biowetsky. Good afternoon. Welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we've just witnessed Nathan Gervin win his sixth successive match of the week. We can take a little look at the stats there. Chris Murphy alongside me to discuss this when you were in comms for the match. How impressed were you with Nathan in that one? Uh, not very, to be honest. <laughs> uh, it was his worst performance, wasn't it, of the week so far. But I was impressed in the way that he managed to grind out victory against Alex Small there. He'll be kicking himself. Um, and I think maybe the two players that are just practicing behind us right now might want to kick him as well because they really would have wanted small victory there. And Alex Small, he's put in a number of performances like that, hasn't he? And he's come out on the wrong end of the majority of them. Yeah, he has. Uh, he's, he's, and Henry put it well earlier on. He, was, he seems to be producing his best stuff early in matches, but then when it comes to the crunch, he's not getting over the line. And that's something that he'll have time to correct over the course of the week, but something that he somehow needs to work on if he wants to make it through to Saturday. Definitely, and is, that is part of the learning curve, isn't it, when you're at the Super Series. We're going to take a look at the table, something I know you're really keen <laughs> to do, because you did predict yesterday that Nathan Gervin would be top of the crop. Yeah, it's about all I've got right so far, and he hasn't <laughs> won it yet, so I won't keep laboring the point, because he might want to kick me if it goes wrong. Yeah, but you've got a four-point gap now after 
grinding out that win. Uh, Biowetsky against Laby next, so one of them will close the gap. So it's a really significant game coming up. But I think he, he is a worthy group leader at the moment. Most definitely. Perfectly put there by Murph. So let's get into that next match then. It is second against third. Chris Murphy's going to head back to the commentary box to join Henry Deacon. Thank you very much, Abby. So to become the main contender to Nathan Gervin in Group A, who's beginning to stretch away with things here. Who, we thought who'd be the mover, who'd be the shaker on moving day. Nathan Gervin's doing that, but Bioretsky and Lauby can pull him back within two points with victory in this one. An interesting day thus far. Lauby beat Stefan Belmont 4-3 in his opening game, an 86 average. Bioretsky was on the wrong end of a 4-1 defeat to Gervin to kick off his day. Lauby then beat Small by four legs to two of a 92 like average, like was Bioretsky Game beat on. Belmont 4-0. And then that brilliant performance from Gervin beat Lauby by four legs to one. And then Bioretsky getting the better of Jamie Kelling 4-3 in a decider in a game where Kelling could and possibly should have got the 59. two points. But what's going to give in this one, I wonder? 100. Lauby with the advantage of throw, which has been a double-edged sword so far today. 125. And I wonder, Chris Murphy, what you expect from this one. 100. Yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? Because it is such a significant match now, particularly after Nathan Gervin managed to get victory in that battle against Danny Small last time out. Whoever wins it will be the one that's really on his shoulder. 99. And it could, again, go either way. The early signs are good, though. Now beyond 68 after 12 darts. Biowetsky. 96. Danny requires 68. Not too far behind. Double four. Now double two. Game shot in the Gets first in the end. Leg. 15 dart. Danny Hold the throw for Danny Lowby in the first leg. And, and I don't know about you, Chris, but I feel as if this is a bigger game for so Danny than it is for Seb. First. Game on. Uh... Give me a reasoning and I'll I'll make a judgment. Just get the feeling, obviously, on the back of that 100. defeat to, to Gervin as well in that last game for Lauby is just derailed a little bit of momentum that he was beginning to build. And Biowetsky today is slowly but surely, I feel, coming towards the boil despite that opening defeat to Gervin. He got over the line against Kelly, perhaps he shouldn't have done. And then, Please, obviously, that 4-0 you know. victory against Belmont when he averaged a a shade under 94. I, I feel like he's perhaps now getting used to this environment and Aye, feeling more comfortable want... on the stage. Yeah, I see your reasoning. I think it's an equally big game for the pair of them. I think that, of course, Bioetsky wants to carry on that, that role and, and stopping him in his tracks could have an adverse effect on the rest of the day for him. And we Be know that Alex Small eight. has been competitive in his games over the course of the last couple of days. And that is his last opponent today in a, a couple of games' time. For Danny Lauby, he will take on Jamie Kelling, who has been much less so. 134. Certainly in this morning session. One or two for Bioetsky to level us up at one apiece. Double 16. Game shot Beautiful the finish. Leg. Beautiful Sebastian finish on Bioetsky. Sebastian Bioetsky. And it's that kind of thing that he seems to have added to his game today, isn't it? I feel like it's Danny to throw Those first. three dark combos. We've seen him earlier on today. Taking Nine, out finishers like the 124 against Kelling. But smaller ones like the 78 that he had against Belmont as well. Measured it in the last game. His action just looks so much smoother now. 57. Which means reliability isn't going to be an issue. That's a beautiful first dart. 
140. I'm lucky not to get the max. Going through the gears at the right time here, Bioetsky, and Lauby needs a response. That'll do. One hundred and forty. Well, that's not a bad response from Bioetsky himself. Believed one, 60. two, one after nine. We've seen him twice. Produced twelve darters today. Another here would really turn this tie in his favour. Bullseye. Let's just check him if it went in the trouble or not. Seventy-four. Danny, we need to check whether that went into the bullseye or not. And for Lowby here, one five two. Double 16. Game that is absolutely day. sublime. Danny Lowby. Under the circumstances, under the pressure, Danny Lowby comes out with a 1 5 2. Well, and he's playing all the right there. notes at all of the right times. He leads 2 1. And this is the quality contest that we were hoping that we are expecting. And we are now 89. getting. And a new high checkout for the week as well, beating his own. PB of 149 against Ooh, Belmont earlier today. We're going to see a battle between the cellar dwellers after this. But this it really is top tungsten tossing at the right end of the table. 140. However, you said it earlier on as well. How often do you see a big finish followed by a, a sloppy start in the following leg? We saw that from Lauby there. 140. Of course, if you offered a player a sloppy start and a big finish, you'd take the big finish every time, wouldn't they? This is coming up to the boil nicely. Well, will he go for this if he gets the opportunity just to land a blow back? We won't find out. 58. You know, he really probably should have gone 19 with dart two and then he hit the single bull with dart three. Because had he done that, he'd be on a two darter now. And Lauby's weighed in with a maximum to leave himself on a double. And everything may have changed. Triple 18. No, he decided to stay there on 86. 65. And Game suddenly, Danny Lauby gets double 19 Danny for a 3 Lauby. 1 lead, a break of throw, and now he's. Fine for the match. How quickly a game can change. This is what we've been waiting for from if Danny Lauby. Danny to throw first. Averaging in three figures. Biowetsky not far behind in that department, but it is the timing. The 180 in the penultimate visit in this leg. The 152 in the last visit to win the previous leg. This is Lauby at top level. And when Lauby got the 152, his opponent was sat on 47. 121. Of course, we did see him at the uh, World Series of Darts event, didn't we, over in New York? 60. At the famous Madison Square Garden. He's gone from MSG to MSS. One. Playing here at the Moda Super Series. I'm sure Gunwolf Keys is much better than Times Square. Take your word for it. He's having a good time in this match. And his timing has been on point. 60. Well, he tried to just force it through, didn't he? It would have been a, a beautiful dart, but he's in a beautiful position to beat Biowetsky here. And Biowetsky perhaps doesn't know what's hit him. It's been a darting tornado that's Danny come sweeping into town from Danny Lauby. And he wants Shanghai. To see one of the performances it, of the week. Does it go bull bull? No, he's found a way past. 80. Sebastian, well, look you're what Biowetsky's on. He couldn't. Could he? Could he? Go oh, my goodness! Sebastian Biowetsky. Have some of that, Danny Lowby. Starting deja vu. Dart Javu. Sublegged Sebastian to throw first. Game on. Biowetsky hits back. Anything you can do, I can do, says the pole. And it's a, an exchange of 1-5-2 checkouts 58. in this game that has kept this game going. 
It's his second ton plus checkout of the match as well. 134. Clip this down under Super Series Classic. Uh, the highlight reel today just put this match in its entirety. It has been superb. And it may yet get the last leg decider that it merits. The only man no, who doesn't want five. that is the USA's Danny Lauby, who has let a 3-1 lead slip. And Biowetsky is looking to 79. remove Lauby from pole position. Fifty-five, and it is all in Biowetsky's favour now. Lauby must have thought, must have thought that he was coming back to win the match. He may not win the match now. He may be going all the way to a deciding leg. Ninety-nine, Sebastian, you record one hundred. One, two, six to make it three apiece. We left the ball, so Lauby would turn to 118 for the match. Danny Rick, 118. 60 for starters. Good guide. He's hit double 19 already. Nine, but he nine. can't find it this time. Sebastian, you Matt Dark 68. goes begging. And Biowetsky is looking to pick up the pieces and force a decider, but he may need the ball. It is the ball. 43. It whistles past the wire. Danny Rick, and the game, therefore may not go to the wire. Does not like the lie of that dart. Three. And he can't find a way past it. Sebastian, you require 25. Bioetsky didn't afford him a dart a double in the last leg. Lauby's missed two for the match. Game shot in the sixth And leg. he may not win the match. Sebastian Bioetsky. This has been a super show of defiance on Sebastian Bioetsky. And this superb game, which has swung one Seven way, the then the other, is first. going to get a last leg shootout. This seesaw tungsten battle has the conclusion it so deserves. 97. But which way will the pendulum swing? Who will pick up the points? We've been so engrossed in the match, it's 100. easy to forget the consequences. But it is a battle to become the nearest rival to Nathan Gervin in this group to move within two points of the league leader. 43. And it all comes down to a single leg of darts in which Lauby has the throw. And Lauby managed to lob two over the top of that first dart, which could have been awkward. What a time for 140 that is. Yeah, and it's 15. Three bigger visits in this match for Danny Lauby. It's 15 three-figure visits in this match for Sebastian Biowetsky. 60. That could be an opening if Biowetsky can get a couple of trebles. And that first dart sat up nicely for him, but he couldn't follow the lie. 60. Danny and so six for Lauby for the match at a crucial two points. 100. Leaves himself handy enough. All Biowetsky can do from here is hit and hope. 140. Danny There's 45. the hitting. Here comes the hoping. Go but the Polish prayers the are not answered Danny as Danny Lowby lands the winning double in the most thrilling match we've seen so far this week. At the Modus Super Series, Lauby moves within two points of the league leader, Nathan Gervin, at the expense of Biowetsky, who came back from 3-1 behind by virtue of matching that high checkout of 1-5-2. An absolutely enthralling, entertaining and exciting encounter is edged by Danny Lauby. And coming next is the battle at the basement between Stefan Belmont and Jamie Kelling.
Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series where we have just seen Danny Lauby come through a thriller, the highest quality contest of the day so far. As you can see there, the average is Danny Lauby with a 94, 1180, but both players taking out 152 at crucial moments. A phenomenal 152 under enormous pressure from the American to take a 2 1 lead in that match. Lauby bettering his high check out of 149 hit earlier this morning before a 152 from the pole to break and get back to within a leg of Lauby. But Lauby doing enough to come through in a last leg decider in that match. We're finally starting to see the Danny Lauby that we were expecting to see this week at the Super Series. But now we turn our attention to the other half of the draw. It is, of course, the bottom of the table. And as we can see there on the screen, the table as it stands, it's Jamie Kelling and Alex Small. Alex Small, two points above Kelling. So this is a really important battle if Alex Small wants to keep within touching distance. Of course, Stefan Belmont as well, who he's playing in this next round. It is Stefan Belmont against Jamie Kelling in this next match. Stefan Belmont could get within two points of Sebastian Biowetsky if he is to win this match in the company of Chris and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. Right, it's a big game for the pair. Stefan Belmont needs to win if he's going to keep tabs with the top three, it will put him to within two points of Biowetsky in third, which is going to be his realistic challenge over the next couple of days to try and get himself into Group B. Jamie Kelling, he just needs to stop the rot somehow. It's been a baptism of fire at times for the man from Andover. Hey, He's 33, nicknamed JK. Game on. Just needs to find a victory of any kind of description really doesn't he Murph? Yeah absolutely he is the man sitting right at the bottom but he does have a feeling that there are two leagues going on right now one at the top and one at the bottom. 100. Belmont maybe separated by leg different from Alex Small but kind of is a, a meeting between the bottom two the same points as Small oh, who will one. play in the next match against Sebastian Biowetsky so a big big 30 to 40 minutes for those players at the wrong end of the table. 55. And it could be the start of digging themselves out of a hole, or it could be them carrying on digging. Indeed. And as I mentioned, Vich, you put Belmont into a two of Biowetsky, then face Nathan Gervin in his final game of the day. So the matches don't get any easier by any stretch of the imagination. One but then he'd be hoping that. His fellow friend on six points, Alex Small, does him a favour. He takes on Sebastian Biowetsky in the game that follows this. Thinking about that, Fred, you and Paul Nicholson were having a little chat about uh, phrase. Oh, think about that phrase there, digging yourself out of a hole. It seems a silly one, doesn't it? Why would you try and do that? There's only one way you can go when you're digging. 140, Stephen, you've got 147. Maybe Belmont can climb out of a hole by taking out a supersized finish. We saw two of those, the same finish, in fact, in the previous match. Breathless stuff between Biowetsky and Lauby. 57, Jamie require 83. Sixteen for the ball. Bullseye is... 58. Stephen, you require 90. Maybe the same target for Belmont if he finds two single 20s. It will be. You'll hope to find a treble with that dart. But it is the ball for Belmont. Game shot in the first leg. And it is bully Stephen for Belly. Belmont. And Belmont takes the lead by a leg to nil. I've been waiting all week to say that, can you tell? But he leads so in this James crucial battle that. for him Game to on. try and keep tabs with third. But Jamie Kelling, it's that familiar feeling of a leg lost. I should just clear that up, actually. It, it is Belmont's nickname, Veli. Henry isn't being disparaging in any way there. Talking about digging holes, you just Six. shoved me in it. <laughs> I got you out of it, actually. It's 
also one of my nicknames for different see reasons. Once. So just 79. One more round of matches to come after this one. The final three, Biowetsky against Small, followed by Gervin Belmont, and then Kelling Lauby. I mean, based on what we've seen, Nine they should be six. very, very predictable. And today has been much more predictable than yesterday. It was a real unexpected set of results yesterday. Today has gone a little bit more One to how you might have fancied it to go. And that's why we're getting that clear separation between the top three and the bottom three. Well, I didn't think I'll be talking to you approaching the final round of fixtures and seeing One a clear disparity 100. in the table. We thought that there'll be a lot of jostling for position, but we thought there'd only be a couple of points maybe separating first and fourth even. Well, yeah, we said maybe four would still be 80. in contention, at least four. That could still happen if Belmont wins this match and then manages to get the better of Nathan Gervin, who, remember, despite victory in his previous match against Alex Small, 102. posted his worst performance. So still the possibility for Belmont to put himself in the picture. Nine, this is four. one of his last Amy two McCoy games. 40. Small is also on six points, but has already played nine out of the ten. It'll play over the first two days. Game's on the second leg. And that'll Jamie just make Kelly. Jamie feel a little bit better. Levels us up at one apiece. But Stephen Belmont will be an the interesting player because if he does win both of his remaining games, you mentioned the last time he was in action, he's been getting better as the week goes on. Six. We were speaking yesterday about his notoriously slow starts. He's just working his way into this tournament format a bit more now. And maybe going into Wednesday, 100. even if he can't win the group, he could be the player that could be the kingmaker, could be the one that causes the problems for the boys at the top. 60. The order of play for tomorrow. Sees Belmont play in the very first match against the man at the top, Nathan Gervin. The last match of the session, though. Well, you mentioned Belmont being a potential spoiler in the group. Danny Lauby plays in his last match, but the very last match is Gervin against Biowetsky. I wonder, I wonder if we could see a winner-takes-all contest there. Saw it a couple of weeks ago in Group A between Justin Smith and Lisa Ashton. 45. But... I just get the feeling from, from this point, if Nathan wins every other game, he's home and hose, do you think? It's him 60. who's in the box seat. It's him who's going to make the ultimate decisions in terms of the destiny of this group, you said, from here. But his worst performance yet in his last match. Still managed to get a victory, and that's the most important thing. Stephen Belmont, towards the end of today, is going to have a big say. Not just in the future of others, but certainly in his own future as well. Two wins. And things look very different for him. But he's in trouble here because Kelling has leveled. And now he's looking to break. 100. Stephen, you require 140. Well, we've seen some big finishes in our previous match, two 152s, but the 140 won't go. So Kelling here. For a 2 1 lead, wants 56. Jamie require 56. And the tide has turned dramatically in this one. Tops for Kelling. Game shot and there it is. Man. One dart is all Jamie it takes Kelling. for Jamie Kelling. Four leg, it's Jamie to throw first. And he's just upped it here, isn't he? The last leg and a half, Jamie Kelling. Yeah. And he's needed to, just for his own peace of mind, if you like, One ending the day. Hundred. And we've seen brilliance from Danny Lauby, who he will play in the last match of the day. But we've also seen stuff that's way below par from him. 85. Kelling is playing a decent standard in this one. If he can repeat that, maybe he can get a couple of wins. Look, I don't think he's going to be in the race to top the group, but a couple of victories certainly puts him in the picture. For a top three finish, doesn't it? Exactly, and if he can come back tomorrow and win four or five, then it 
it certainly forces the issue of those directly above him. But 60. I just think that there's just so much room to make up with such little time remaining. It looks likely it's going to be Group C 96. for Kelling. And tomorrow will be about just putting himself in the best possible shape to go and attack it. And we know that finishing bottom of Group A doesn't spell the end of your week. Kieran T and, and the first ever night here at the Live Lounge 61. finished bottom of Group A and then went on to win the whole thing, pick up the five bags. There's Aaron Monk, Kurt Parry and Lee Cox that will join Group 59. C. Later this week, the other three players still to play. Colin Osborne, Matt Dennon, and Scott Williams. Of course, Williams fresh from that record-breaking fourth Jamie challenge to a win. 46. The most challenge to a title in a year by any player. He's also won a pro to a title as well. How good this format is. He's on his second 100. chance. He didn't qualify first time round. So he's coming back for round two. Yeah, only one player gets through in the new format. It's 12 weeks to Champions Week. 140. Than the you get three Jamie players through from each week of action. No more than two chances on offer for any Jamie player. On the four black. Jamie, Jamie Kelly is keeping his chances alive of maybe not having to play in the afternoon sessions later this week. My first Stephen small to steps first. maybe being made here. And it's scuppering. Belmont's chances of still being in with a shout tomorrow, isn't it? We felt 60. there might be four players, but if Belmont loses here, you'd probably have to say that there'll definitely only be three in contention. The top spot, that is. Totally agree, and he's having oh, an off game at the worst possible time, is Belmont. Worked so hard to kind of put himself in and around the picture, but Averaging 82.6 at this present moment in time. And looks as if Kelling's in a commanding position in this match, even if not in this Six. leg. Belmont may be making a move here. One he'll be disappointed. That first start was absolutely perfect to follow. And... Neither dart did that. 140. Kelling gets himself back into the leg with that two treble visit. Belmont has still only had one dart. That's 60. a double, and that was at the ball at the end of a 90 combo in the first leg. Sixty. But you can sense a disappointment there from Kelling. Belmont's going to get six on 181. And, well, the ton machine in this leg wouldn't mind another one at this juncture. Nine, two, but that strays into the triple one. Leaves him on 98. Ninety two. One of those sort of slightly awkward finishes, 98, as is 118, to be fair. Could end up on 98 with two darts himself, but treble 18 here, or maybe even, maybe even double double. He's gone the conventional route. No score. Given... Oh Jamie my! He's ended up busting his score. And Kelling has not just got a chance; he's got a glorious chance to wrap up the match here and now, because Belmont has to come back 58. for the 98. Stephen you require 98. I cannot quite believe that. Yeah, I thought he might stay there, to be honest. 58. Jamie requires 60. Has the belly bust cost him? <laughs> and Jamie Kelling almost followed suit. What kind of thing is going on? 40. Stephen, you require 40. Finishing a double, lads, not a treble. Tots of Bellman. Double 10. Five. This is getting a bit shaky now for the Swiss. 35. And Kelling will return for double ten Jamie to seal a 4-1 victory, which has seismic circumstances for Stefan Belmont. 
Game show and there it the is. Jamie Kelly Jamie wraps Kelly. up a 4 1 win against Stefan Belmont. And he joins the Swiss and Alex Small on six points in Group A with his first victory of the day with an 82.67 average, four from 10 on the doubles, a high out of 56. And so we enter. The final round of fixtures on day two here in Group A. We're going to see Sebastian Biowetsky in action. He can move on to 12 points if he can get victory against the man who's now at the bottom of the group in Alex Small. Hello and welcome back to the Modus Super Series here in Portsmouth. We've got three more matches coming your way as we enter the final round of matches on this second day of action in Group A. And as Chris Murphy said, a lot of the results today have been more predictable than they were yesterday with Gervin, Lauby and Biowetsky coming into the form we were expecting from them. But let's have a look at the stats from the last match. We saw Jamie Kelling, of course, with a 4-1 victory, an average just shy of 83 with 40 percent checkout percentage in that one as well a much needed win for jamie in that one after stefan had done such great work to get himself 
back in a good position in the league standings, which we can take a little look at now before we move on to our next match. There we have it. Nathan Gervin still leading the way. Jamie Kelling now making sure he doesn't get cut adrift at the bottom. He's on six points. Next up, we do have Alex Small, who's looking to advance to eight points. He can get to within two points of Biowetsky if he can get the win over him in this next match. Let's hand over then to our commentary team for this one. It's Chris and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. Big game coming up here for Sebastian Biowetsky. When you look at the positioning of the lead table, which we saw a second or two ago, a victory would put him back on 12 points, level with Danny Lauby and within two and Nathan Gervin, but defeat would see him nervously look over his shoulder ahead of the final day's action here in Group A in Week 9 here at the Modus Super Series. And that is how quickly things can change on Tuesday here in this tournament format. Anything can happen. Players who may look at one end may then have to look over their shoulder with a defeat or two. Yeah, and I think we're getting to the stage where you can talk about some matches as must win. And this might be one. For both players, really, because Sebastian Biowetsky needs to win it to hey, keep himself like in contention to, throw first. to finish top of the Game group. On. And Small probably needs to win it to keep himself in contention to get a third place finish in the group. Couldn't be any more right there, Murph. 140. Biowetsky the favourite, and we are going to see the top three play the bottom three in the final three matches of Tuesday's action. Belmont up against Gervin next, the league leader, Nine, and then Lavi seven. faces Jamie Kelling, fresh from his first victory. Nine, and there is a potential one. here if the three players at the top beat the three players at the bottom. Tomorrow we are just looking at a three-way race for top place. And it's probably too much to do for the bottom three to contemplate Nine, trying to break the threshold of third place unless someone perhaps wins every single game. Yeah, they're playing into Nine, playing five. themselves into form for group C. Isn't it? That's the order of day alternatively. If the bottom three all win, then group gets blown wide open. Drama on Wednesday Ooh, at the Super Series. So Biowetsky leaves himself on one, two, four with the darts after twelve in this. Opening leg, and it's going to be under Sebastian some pressure for that 130 from Small. As we check out, he's already taken out today. Ninety-nine. And it can require one hundred. Can't manage it this time. Did it against Jamie Kelling earlier on. Double top. Eighty-five. Sebastian, you require twenty-five. Two eights for Biowetsky. That might be an awkward first no. start. It was. I think it requires and so 20. small returns for double ten for a break of throw in the opening leg. Up for fives. Fifteen. But it drags below and Biowetsky returns. Sebastian, you require sixteen. Sebastian survives, being broken in leg one. Games on the one first leg. For Sebastian Biowetsky. Who leads in his last match of the day. Second leg Already is after the, the first leg, we've seen nine missed darts at double. Both one players know the significance of this match. And those 180s could be significant moments, which turns the tide one way or another. But we've seen at times of Alex Small, smoke and no fire. But, hello, one hundred and eighty. There's smoke and fire now. Alex Small on fire and threatening to do what Conor Heenahan did last week here at the Super Alex, Series. The Irishman was the first to produce a perfect leg on that stage. Well, that prospect is denied Alex Small with dart seven. But he does leave himself in a good position here. I'd love to see a combined match time between him and Ricky Evans. We'll discuss that shortly. That's a slip into the single one. He is going to return, so it's not a complete disaster, but 
He should have come back for three at double. He's only going to come back for two when he returns. 140. Yeah, he scored 52. 360 points with his first six starts. And only 89 with his next six. The second leg. It doesn't matter. He gets Alex a leg Small. one and levels up the match. Inside the regulation 15. One apiece here. Bioretsky, well, though, with the advantage of... Throw in the third. Ninety-three. Forty-seven. That felt too quick there, didn't it? Yeah, maybe a little bit excited after the nine dart attempt. One hundred and forty. Almost as excited as you, Henry. Not possible, Murph, is it? 100. We have had 10 perfect legs overall since the concept of this tournament was born, but only one on that stage. It came actually in the 60. evening by Conor Heenahan last week after Steve Brown had missed a double for one in the afternoon. The last three days of last week were just absolutely incredible. Group A is... Merely the little appetizer, isn't it? For what's to follow later in the week. I don't know about you, Matt, but I couldn't sleep all night on Saturday. It was just there was just such a buzz towards the action that we saw last Saturday 65. evening where Conan Whitehead Sebastian booked his place 74. in Champions Week. That's what these two players want to do. Bioretsky is harping hopes of being back on Saturday night via 84. winning group A. He is going to come back to win the second leg of this match, which would put him within two points of the top. 128. Sebastian, you're required 20. So double 10. To edge ahead once more. 5 found. Third leg. And it is Biowetsky. Back in the lead. Well, is Alex to throw first. What do you make of the uh, Champions Week lineup so far? Is there anybody that really stands out for you? I was asked by Abby yesterday. For me, it's Graham Usher, the man to watch the man to beat. I'd be. say he's probably, yeah, he's, he's got to be the favourite out of that group of players, hasn't he? Um, I mean, don't just credit Graham Hall. And again, Robert Owen. Well, I yeah. mean, we forget about him because he won it so long ago. But as I said to Abby last night, that the 60. first six players that qualified have never played on this stage before their first outing is going to be at Champions Week, and I think that will be different. Robert Owen is so well-versed in playing in the, the old studio in Southampton. So it's going to be a very different feeling for him. He's actually the player who's played the most matches there and won the most matches there. To be honest, I, I don't think it matters to Robert Owen. I don't think he cares where he's throwing darts. He'll just, he'll just throw darts, he'll enjoy it, and you'll know if he wins. He's a man who's, of course, reached the semi-finals of the UK Open before. Sebastian Biowetsky here, a man who's reached the quarterfinals in that tournament. The FA Cup of Darts, as they call it. Indeed. 140. I like it requires 79. Tops were small. 59. And if it went 2 2, there'd be no Sebastian replays in this match. 41. It's straight down to a winner. 41 for Bioretsky for a free one lead. Break a throw. Game and he's going player. to throw for the match here. Sebastian Bioretsky. For what would be a crucial two points to him. It would put him on to 12. It put him on a dozen alongside Danny. Fifth leg, it's and Sebastian two points to throw first. And for Gervin at the summit. Biowetsky. That's unlucky. Yeah, bouncing back, 40. isn't he, after that defeat to Danny Lauby. In that brilliant battle we saw just a couple of games ago. Sometimes after 65. that type of match, it can be difficult to to prepare correctly for the next one, particularly when you're only having one game off. That no, happens in this format. Three. Sometimes it's one game, sometimes it's up to four, isn't it? Because everybody has to play each other. That was really aggressively thrown. I think he actually threw that differently to the first two darts, and it probably landed at a different angle, which is why it ended up on the floor there. Dartboard's been a little bit like a trampoline today. There's been so many bounce-outs. 
59. One hundred and forty. But that was some bounce back ability there from Alex Small. Should get six and one seven six unless Biowetsky. One hundred and sixty four can do that. An excellent counting as well. It's best you have a this is 45. for the match. This is for 12 points. The pile the pressure on those directly above. 58. And Small's going to have to take out this 137 to keep his hopes alive. 97. Sebastian, you require 87. And so 87 to seal it for Seb. Bullseye! Six. And it would have been to an in style. And it can require 40. Does the match go on? Game shot the fifth leg. Top corner. Alex Small. I'm not going to say like a David Beckham free kick anymore. Let's go. Kieran Trippier. Sure, he's got to be Gareth Bell. He's Welsh. Game on. He's also at the, the wrong end. I'm going to go Barry Bannon. 131. I thought we weren't going to discuss <laughs> League One today. Who's, who's Portsmouth's premier player at the moment? Aye, Joe Morrell, I suppose, is up there. Dane Scarlett. Incorrect. Andy Jenkins. <laughs> of course, Nathan Gervin's using... Jenks has darts, isn't he? And he's won all of his matches so far today. I know that Jenkins is uh, sunning himself up somewhere rather warmer than Pompey. 60. He's allowed, Bowman's Castle. He's allowed uh, Gervin to use his darts while he's 60. on a break. I think he should be asking for a bit of commission from whatever prize money that Scott picks up this week. 100. So what happens if Nathan gets through to Champions Week? 174. Well, if Andy Jenkins gets through to Practice Week, then he's got a to uh, Champions Week, then he's got a problem, hasn't he? It's gonna be a <laughs> it's gonna be a case of do you remember you, you, you go down one of those backstreet 60. pubs? They've only got one set of darts, and so maybe they've got to share. Double top to share six legs. Fifty. Well, Small has quietly worked his way back into this match, but he's been involved in lots of 4-3s, and he's been on the wrong end of most of them. He won 4-3 in his opening match today against Jamie 44. Kelly. He lost 4-3 in his last match against Nathan Gervin. Is he going to take us a distance again? Game shot he was beaten 4-3 by Biowetsky yesterday. We do go Seven all the way again. Is Sebastian to throw first. Game Can on. Can Small return the results? Will Biowetsky buckle? Nine, two, Big seven. last start. Huge last start there for Biowetsky. Otherwise, it would have opened the door for Small. Eighty one. But again, it's looking at the last start. He's rushing the release. It's almost as if he's stepping forward as he throws it. I know Nine, that we've been critical of players in the past, in the PDC ranks and the likes of that, for walking on the last dart. It's Nine, just maybe the one area five. of his game he's just got to maybe look at. Well, when you do that, you also have to be careful that you don't actually cross the hockey. We've seen darts being disallowed for that before. 97. Referees do put their foot down on those types of things. 99. See what you did there? I'll catch up with you at some point. I think you're a race, you've raced ahead, Henry. I go for quality rather than quantity. 40. Ouch. Well, this could be quality. From Sebastian Biowetsky, what a way it would be. Sebastian, you record 100. To seal victory. Not to be. Won't get a dart of the ball. Small could get the ball. He could get better. And he could get the better of Biowetsky. 
The bullseye. 61. To beat Biowetsky, so but it comes and goes. 112. And so 112 for Biowetsky for the match. And double 16 would have been some way to secure the win. But it's not going to happen. And small returns for the 25. Taking his time. Having a moment. Having a look. And that's made it difficult. And Biowetsky will come back. He requires 32. Big, big, big chance goes begging for small. But Sebastian can't seal it. And it can require five. And so small returns for an opportunity he thought he wasn't going to get. Takes his time to compose himself for double two. Madhouse. Three. That was high and wide, and Bielecki returns once again. Well, he can't say he hasn't had his chances, can he? Missed the ball for the 86. Sebastian, you require 16. Missed a couple more darts at double in the following visit, and then another two in that one. Game and Biowetsky takes Sebastian advantage, Biowetsky. survives the scare. It's a big win for Biowetsky against Small, who now, in reality, is going to have a huge task on his hands tomorrow, even to breach the top three. He loses another deciding leg, and Biowetsky keeps himself firmly in the race to top the table at the end of Wednesday's action. The other two protagonists, Nathan Gervin and Danny Lauby, still have to play their final matches today. Gervin faces Stefan Belmont after the break. Hello and
and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. Before we get on to our penultimate game of the afternoon, let's remind ourselves of what just happened in the last match with Alex Small going down 4-3 to Sebastian Biowetsky for the second successive time this week. Biowetsky bouncing back with his third win of the day in what ended up being quite an edgy last leg decider, a 23 dart leg to win it there for the pole. 22% on the outer ring for him in that one. Again, a bit of trouble on the outer ring. Let's take a look at what that does to the table then before we move on. Of course, we've got Nathan Gervin coming up next. He can extend his lead at the top of the table, going into the final day's action, leave himself perfectly poised heading into Wednesday afternoon's action. He's showing us today as well that he doesn't just win when he's at the top of his game and when he's showing his A game, he's also winning those gritty games with his B game. So let's see how he can get on in this final match for him of the day up against Stefan Belmont, who'll want to bounce back himself and end the day on a high. Let's see whether he can do just that in the company of Chris and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. And so Stefan Belmont will conclude his second day's action here at the Moda Super Series against Nathan Gervin, the man at the top of the table and could go four points clear once again with victory here against the Swiss thrower. Stefan Belmont, the gap is now six points to Lauby and you just get the sense following that win for the pole, as we mentioned in that last game. Hey, first thing is Nathan the to throw gaps first. have appeared game on. and they have become apparent. Yeah, it's looking very interesting, isn't it? Between the, the top three. Whoa, as Gervin starts in perfect fashion. If he wins this match, it will be five out of five for him. If Laubi wins the last match, a second place player will have only lost to the first place player. And the third place player 96. will then be Biowetsky, who will have lost to second and first. So there's a really clear kind of order of merit in this group. And this man at the moment is the boss. And bossing this first leg has set his stall out right from the get-go. 60. Interesting. It's got real shades of last week. And Conor Heenahan, who won all five games on the Tuesday, then didn't get through from Group A. And we are glad he didn't, Three, by the way, the because eight. the following night, he turned up average 115 in one match, the fastest game we've seen. On the Super Series stage, that one was against Johnny Haynes. And then in his next match, he hit a nine darter. One against Adam Smith Neal. 142. 142 for Gervin. And he was the darting Craig David last week. Middle of the range Monday. 58. Five from five on Tuesday. Missed out on Wednesday. Hit a nine darter on Thursday. Squeezed through Group B on Friday. Lost on Saturday and chilled on Sunday. Very good. Very, very good, Henry. Nathan, you require 84. Oh, Game nicely done by Nathan leg. Gervin. Nathan Gervin. I think he might be chilling on Thursday and Friday at this rate. So I get Stefan to throw Something's right, hasn't he? Next. Immediately since that scruffy encounter that he had last time out when he got the better of Alex Small, who just keeps on getting embroiled in battles. The last couple of games for him have gone the distance and he's been on the wrong end of both of them. 14 dart leg, but it just looks so controlled, so calm, One so nonchalant, so good for Nathan Gervin. 180 to open each of the first two legs for the 60. pace setter in group eight. Fifty-eight. The, that one against the throw, just piling the pressure on Belmont straight away. Needs a max himself to leave a finish after nine. Won't be doing that. Eighty. Sensible stuff that to no, switch with the not. second dart, ensuring that that treble does put him on a checkout. Give yourself as many possibilities as possible. 
That sort of makes sense. Nathan, you have a 164. This is possible. Becoming probable. It's probably inevitable. 139. But it's the ball. 121. That's beyond him. Belmont will get a go for the 1 2 1. So Gervin returns for the 25. 25. For a 10 or lead in pretty much next to no time at all. Game Double eight. And left. this is just absolutely Nathan ridiculously Gervin. good from Gervin. 14 dart leg, 2 0 lead. Average is 107.36. Now, it is early to talk about Game an average on. two legs in, but the le the match might be halfway through. Could be a 4-0 whitewash win. Thanks for coming. 57. 28 darts to win the first couple of legs. Sometimes when your opponent's pay playing like that, you think you have to play to get, pay to get in. Well, you don't have to pay to get into the Super Series here. If you want to be here on Saturday night, free tickets available from dartshop.tv. And you'll probably see Nathan Gervin at this rate because he is emerging as the hot favourite to top this group. Good segue, Chris. 78. I don't need praise, Henry. I know I'm above average at this job. One and Nathan Gervin's above average in the darting stakes. That's his third max of the match. We're only three legs in. He's averaging a shade under 112. They only opened this leg with 57 as well, and he's gone out in 14 Six. darts in each of the Make first two legs. He could better that by completing this combo. Double eight to do so. Game Delightful darting, dreamy darting, spectacular from the Scot, who's now averaging 112.72 after that dozen dart well, leg. Stefan to and Stefan that. Belmont must be feeling like a rabbit in the headlights here. When you consider in his last game, he averaged 78 Fair, and a half, on. Nathan Gervin. This has been a tungsten turnaround from the man in tartan. Well, not literally in Tartan, but the 60. Tartan Tungsten Terminator, I suppose, to steal a line. You got there in the end. I think Nathan Gervin's been there from the beginning in this match. 100. And he's only started with 60, but remember, he only started with 57 in the last leg, and he ended up going out in 12. 97. Looks like we're going to see the best performance statistically that we've witnessed in this group so far. And Nathan Gervin is threatening his own personal Six. best here at the Super Series, which is 108.23. That single four won't no, help the not. cause. And suddenly here, Stefan Belmont could be favourite to win this leg if he can get a couple of trebles. Not going to happen. 58. Forty-eight. Sixty. So Belmont first to finish in this particular leg. And for all the brilliance of Nathan Gervin, Belmont just bring it back to 3-1. It will ask a question. Okay, Gervin's got the darts in the next. Fee, he doesn't want this to be a procession to finish off his day. 64. May I look at the ball at some point in this visit. Opted against it. 58. Had he used it, he would have been on 100. At least. Or at most. 140. Stephen, you require it's not 140. on a two dart. He needs to use all three. And Gervin has teed up a match-winning chance. 
Double 16 to deny that chance. Seventy. Can't find it. And the average may not even end Nathan up as 100 for Nathan Gervin, but it is still a spectacular showing from the Scot. Saving his best until last. Go and Gerber will be match. the man Nathan to beat Gerber. on the final day of Group A here at the Super Series. He will go top of the table overnight, no matter what. And he's done it in some style, an average of 98 and a half. It was well above the ton, the huge sways of that game. Four out of six on the doubles, a one, two, four high checkout. It was superb. It was stupendous. It was simply sublime for Nathan Gervin as he beats the Swiss Stefan Belmont by four legs to nil. Just one more game left on your afternoon session. It's Jamie Kelling up against Danny Lauby after this short break. Hello, good afternoon and welcome back to the Modus Super Series. One more match remaining for you this afternoon, but I am now joined by the man who is going to be top of the table regardless of what happens in this match. Nathan Govan, a superb day, won all of your matches today. You must be feeling amazing. Yeah, that's, I had a not bad day yesterday, um, but I came in today feeling confident, feeling good. All I wanted to do was win every match and it's happened, so I can't be, can be disappointed. And that last match that you played in, we're going to take a little look at the stats now because it was probably statistically your best match of the day. You were averaging over a ton for much of it. How did you feel up there? Um, coming into the last game, I, I, was, feeling, I was feeling good. Uh, I was just hoping to win. I didn't matter how I played, how I finished, as long as I won. But yeah, to see the stats there, I was over the moon, over the moon. And one of the things we've noticed with you, it doesn't matter whether you're trailing, whether you're in front, you had, of course, 
you lost those 120 points to the floor, but you don't let things like that get to you. You keep going. How much has Alan Suter helped with that side of your game? Um, yeah, he's, he's helped me a lot, to be fair, over the past few years. Um, that's where I started in the academy. But now I've got... Uh, I'm kind of in the same household as Chris Mason, so he's another one that's been there and done it, and he's, tell, he's giving me tips all the time. It doesn't matter if I was to go up there and average 120 and miss one dart at double, you say, oh, Nath, you know what you've done wrong there? You, you missed the one dart at double, you should be better. And I'm always trying to improve my game, always trying to be the best I can be, uh, do the right things, because it is hard. It, you know, I was in Challenge Tour last weekend there, it's, it's hard to play three games there and then and come come here and play five days is it's tough but yeah you, you got to do the right things at the right time and no it's I've got good people behind me I got good good support and that, that means a lot as well it helps a lot Absolutely. on the way we're going to take a little look at the table now which I'm sure you'll love to see yeah, you are either. four points clear as things stand but just to reflect on what you've just said of course these days are quite long and, you know, obviously you've not lost any games today, but when you do lose a game, when it's such a quick turnaround, how hard is it when you go back into the players' room and you have to reflect on that, but you have to move on quite quickly as well? You have to, yeah. It's, if, you, if you're playing first or second, you know uh, you've, you've got to win the first game. And th that's always a, the, the, the main objective, the start of the day, to get the first win under the belt and move from there and keep the confidence and... Yeah, it's nice to win all, all five games today. Yesterday, I was, I was probably a bit lucky to be top of the table, I'd say. Uh, I didn't play my best, my best game at all, but, yeah, to see the table there, it's nice. Uh, we've still got another day to go. With that. It's, it's all close. It's very close to how Thursday, Friday pan out, but it's nice to be top of the table and know what I've got to do tomorrow. And are you the type of player who's going to enjoy being the player that everyone's going to want to be? So you gonna, are you going to relish that tomorrow? Yeah, 100%. Uh, I'd rather be top of the table than bottom, that's for sure. But uh, no, yeah, 100%. I'd, I'd love to be top of the table going into the last day. Uh, I know what I can do. I know I can beat anyone on the planet. It don't matter to me. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be the top of the table going into tomorrow. And just a word as well on the competition in this group, because you've got the likes of Biowetsky. We've seen what he can do in televised tournaments and Danny Lauby as well. It's a really, really competitive group this week, isn't it? It's a very close group. And uh, on paper, it might seem a bit different on past experiences here and stuff, but I don't look at that. I, I know I can play anyone in the world and, and play my game. and I can beat them. But yeah, it's, it's a very tough group and it's going to be close going into tomorrow, 100%. But I'm confident. I know I can do it. He has every reason to be confident going into Wednesday's session. But we've still got one more game remaining this afternoon. So let's get into that with our commentary team of Chris and Henry. Thank you very much, Abby. One game remains on Tuesday here at the Super Series. And we are going to see whether Nathan Gervin is going to have a four-point buffer at the top of the table or two. Because Danny Lalby can slash that lead in half. If he can get victory here against Jamie Kelling, who won in his previous match against Stefan Belmont. But it really has been a day to forget for oh, JK. Jamie to throw first. Game on. His chances of progressing through to Group B. Since actually the chances of all the three in the bottom half of Group A of progressing to Group B are over apart from maybe a perfect day Six, tomorrow. Two. Kenning could get himself onto eight points and maybe force the issue, but he's going to have to beat Danny Lalby, who's starting in perfect style. Yeah, the first three darts do not bode well for either player, well, for Jamie Kelling, rather, from either 140. player. Because his first visit, yes, it was 60, but the darts were sprayed so far apart, while Danny Lalby's were almost magnetically placed. And he's followed with a 140 as well. I have to say, impressed with Aye, young Nathan far. Gervin there in that interview with Abbey. Spoke really well after winning all five of his matches today. But now we're going to have Andy Jenkins and Chris Mason taking credit 100. for what Gervin's done. I think he needs to give the credit to himself. Although two not bad mentors, is it? Danny, required Absolutely. 81. That's why you should give me credit for your fledgling commentary career. Game shot in the first leg. Danny Lowby. Danny Lowby, certainly worthy of a lot of credit so far today. 
A 1 0 lead in no time at all for the American so Eggs. Danny to throw first. As he completes the opening Game leg off. in just 12 darts. You want to know how good a 12 dart leg is? An average of 125.25. 140. And that's rising. Lalby may be teaching Kenning a lesson. Is that how you do the punts? Something like that. You'll get there. 100. Must admit, I did enjoy not. your repercussions pun earlier on. How important is this for Lauby to Nine, get a victory? Two, to get within two, there's a massive difference, quite obviously, between two and four. That's a two match swing or a one match swing, and obviously, they'll play again tomorrow. Well, if he, if he wins, it's still in his hands, isn't it? Because he will have to play Nathan Gervin. So, if he manages to get the better of him tomorrow and goes and does what he's done, then it'll be him that takes top spot, regardless of what Nathan 132. does. 132. 140. Well, is racing his way towards being a couple of points behind. 17 after 12. He's looking for a potential 14 45. dart leg. And it requires 17. To be fair, Jamie Kelling's playing at some rate himself. Double eight. Fours. Nine. Jamie requires. So Kenning returns for one, two, eight. Triple twenty. Would have left the dart at the bullseye, but Loudy returns eight. with double four to double his lead in double quick time. Game on the there it is. Leg. Danny Loudy. And Loudy does open up that two 0 lead against Kelling. So look, it's Jamie to throw first. But this is more like it from JK. 140. Ninety-seven. We're seeing some some sort of markers laid down at the end of the day today, aren't we? Nathan Gervin producing 60. his best performance in his last match. And Danny Lowby threatening to do the same, just to say, look, you're not going to have it all your own way tomorrow. 58. And the last game of the day is the one that players think about the most because it's the most recent in the mind. 96. Game one is pretty much forgotten Nine, about now two. in the minds of most of the players. If you can do your stuff in this one, you're making your opponents around you in the table sleep uneasily tonight. One hundred and forty. Kelling in position 65. to halve the deficit in this curtain closing contest. On Tuesday afternoon, double ten. Game shot. And he gets it, leg. and it will not be a whitewash win Kelly. for Lauby at the end of the day's play. But he's still in a good spot, still after three legs, averaging just shy of 102. Well, look, it's Danny to throw first. Game on. And he says it's crucial for Lauby if he's going to win as well to win big because he's 17 legs behind Gervin on the legs difference. That is a big gap to make up in five games. Sixty. Yeah, and a big gap between the top three and the bottom three, as we've been saying throughout the day. One hundred and eighty from Danny Lauby. It's going to be very, very difficult for Jamie Kelling to live with Lauby at this level. It would be difficult for anybody. One hundred and seventy. I was hoping to hit a 25 there, bedded the ball. He's on 11 after 9. He's hitting big fishes without needing it. 140. Danny he require 11? This is the second time in this match where he's done that and left an odd number. This is for an 11. Double 2 Nine. for 12. You don't often hear that. He's going to return for double 1 for 13.
Well, this is virtual insanity, and it's not coming from JK. Can he require two? Double one. No score. It would be Can he absolute insanity 61? if Kelling was to win the leg. 56 remaining. Could go 20s, could go 16s. He's going for the latter. And he's missed the big number. 29. But it's gone from a brilliant leg to a bonkers one. Madness. Game shot. In the madhouse. And Lauby's up to the task. One of the most bizarre legs he'd probably ever throw. He was on for an 11 dart leg and then ends it on double Jamie one and bets. all inside on. 18. That was after busting a load at double one as well. One away from putting himself in two points of Nathan Gervin and the averages have gone down dramatically as a result. And let's give credit as well to Jamie Kelly because this is by far the highest level he's played at today and he's just been on the receiving end of a stupendous Danny Lowby performance. Yeah, it's been really good stuff from Lauby at the end of the day. And we are going to see that Fee, pattern Fee emerge that we thought we might. When well, the top player has beaten everybody, the second player has beaten everybody but the top player, and the third player has beaten everybody but the top two. 80. And the way that Lauby is throwing in this match, I'm going to uh, take a risk here, Henry. Hang on a minute. Might change my mind if this goes in the treble. One I'll take that hundred. risk, Henry. I'm going to leave you to it. And go and join Abby on the balcony to summarise the day's action. All yours. 91. Thank you, Chris. Although we should say that Chris's predictions today haven't always been correct. But it's Danny Lowby going to end his day before one win over JK. But that's a terrible slip into the single five. 45. Jamie require 100. And suddenly, if JK can take out this ton, it's game on. So I'm going to go triple 20 for double 10. I'm surprised because of the lie of the first dart. 41. Can he require 145? Well, this would be some way to do it. He's not going to do it on this occasion. And so Kenning is going to come back for the 59 to bring it back to 3-2. Just make it a little bit interesting. Tops. Game shot the fifth leg. Jamie Kelly. There we go. But Danny Lowby has the darts to seal a 4 2 win. To put so himself in Danny two of Gervin. And to create a potential grandstand finish to Group A tomorrow morning. 9.30 a.m. start. Join me and Chris Murphy in the commentary box for all the action. Abigail Davis will be back, I'd say, in the presenter's chair, but in the Presenters balcony. 78. And then from Thursday onwards, we have a special guest commentator. More of that. 140. Closer to the time. Seventy six. One hundred and thirty four. Lauby's going to get six from 167 to win the match. 85. Danny Rick, 167. Going to set up. 41. That's a slip which could possibly let Kellin back in. 56. And he, he couldn't take advantage, 26. so another six and one, two, six for Lauby to seal it. Bullseye, 101. he went for it. But it was just underneath into the 25, which is what he's going to return for in a few seconds' time to wrap this up. 95, and he required 25. Double 12. Nineteen. Two sixes, but it goes inside. Jamie require 111. And so can Jamie Kelling take out the Nelson finish? Treble 17. 
for tops. 71. Just above the wire. Six. And so Lauby returns for double three. Went straight for it. Going and gets it in with the, the second dart. And Danny, Danny Lauby will go within two points of Nathan Gervin at the top of the table overnight. These are the statistics from our final game of the day. An average just below 99. Sorry, 89 for Danny Lauby in the end. The average was above a ton in the early to middle stages of the match. Two 180s in there. Four from 17 on the checkouts is the reason why the average is below 90 and not above it. A high out of 81 for the American who gets himself within two points of Nathan Gervin at the top of the table overnight. Let's get some final thoughts and reflections now. We're going to head up to the balcony where Chris Murphy is alongside our host, Abigail Davis. Yeah, thank you very much. We've seen some bizarre, some bonkers and some brilliant darts today, haven't we, Chris? But we are going to start with your highlight, which is you predicted <laughs> Nathan to be sat of the table going into the final day. Yeah, I'm not going to take too much credit for that until he, he wins the group, if he does win the group tomorrow. But we've seen a real kind of pecking order develop, haven't we, with, as I was saying, Tenry and Combs. Nathan beating everybody, Danny beating everybody but Nathan, and then Sebastian beating everybody but those two. So it's, a, it's two groups now in Group A, and it looks like the bottom three will definitely be playing in Group C, and the top three will be battling it out for that first place. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we can take a little look at the table. Is there anyone in that bottom half? You can see there is a six-point gap now. Do you think there is anyone in that bottom half who can threaten second or third? I mean, everybody can be everybody. We saw that yesterday, yeah. but we haven't seen any indication that any of those three are going to go and win four or five matches and get themselves into those top three spots. I think Alex Small, of all of them, has been involved in closer matches. The games that he's lost have often been 4-3, and he has had little spells where he's thrown really brilliant darts. So out of those players, he's the most likely, but I don't see it happening. And it is a case, you mentioned it in commentary, with Alex Small. He's been involved in so many 4-3, so many close contests, and just coming out on the wrong side of them. It's just maybe not being consistent enough during the course of even a match, not even over the course of the day. Yeah, and maybe it's just a little bit of inexperience yeah. as well. Of course, he's never played in this format before. He did win a much more brutal format, mm. the Champion of Champions, but on the new stage, playing relentlessly game after game after game, and, and every game takes on a new importance as well, doesn't it, in this format? So, yeah, maybe a bit of inexperience, and we've seen players grow into the weeks. Kieran Tian being an example a couple of weeks ago and, and go and win the title. And just a final word on the man of the moment, Nathan Gervin. He spoke so impressively as well, didn't he? He's so mature for just 19 years of age. Yeah, he really is. And he felt like uh, a player who kind of bore well that tag of being the favourite, of being the man to catch. He seemed to be revelling in it, enjoying it. And I think he'll take some beating tomorrow. It's still a real battle between him, him and Danny Lauby. If Danny can get his finishing right, because his scoring's been excellent, then, you know, watch out. But Nathan Gervin, for me, is very much the man to beat. Absolutely. It is all still to play for, especially in those top three places tomorrow. So let's find out how it unfolds. We'll be back tomorrow morning from 9.30 yet again. We'll see you then.